since 1960, meaning they've been doing it for a century. The Citadel with the all-time lead in the series, 41 to 26 to one, and Tom Henson last year at Johnson Haygood Stadium with a 39 to 12 victory over Wofford. The Bulldogs broke a 16-game head-to-head losing streak against the Terriers. Winning for the first time over Wofford since 1998. That was also the last time Citadel won in this facility, and they did it with some authority last uh, last year down in Charleston. Beautiful day here in Spartanburg, 61 degrees and sunny. Citadel kicks it off left to right, line drive kick deep into the end zone. Ellis Pace will let it bounce on by him for a touchback, and the Wofford Terriers will start the day with the football after the Citadel won the toss and deferred to the second half. The Terriers, the home team today, black tops, old gold letters and numbers, gold pants, gold helmets, the Citadel on the road in the white tops with the powder blue letters and numbers, gray pants, white helmets with the blue C on the side as uh, the Terriers will send out Demel, Miller, Daniels, Jake and Duffy, and Warby left to right along the offensive front. Lorenzo Long, the fullback, Will Gay, the halfback, as the Terriers are going to line up out of the gun. The quarterback, Brandon Goodson, six foot even, 205, the red shirt, junior handoff, long right up the middle, and he'll push ahead for two yards to the 27-yard line, and we are underway. Joe Crochet, the cat linebacker in this 3-4 defensive front for the Bulldogs with the first tackle of the afternoon. And one of the best linebackers in the Southern Conference. Crochet will be heavily involved today. Wofford going right to left, driving toward the Terrier Vision end of the stadium. Goodson checks off as Wofford goes to the wing bone. One man in motion right, counter give Will Gay, and he is stuck after just a half-yard gain. Yikes. Taken down hard by Miles Pierce. He is the right linebacker in this Citadel set. High tackle around his neck, but clean. And Wofford's in a position they don't necessarily want to be in, and that's third and long. Opening drive of the ball game, opening minute. Wofford looking at third and seven now from their 28 wing bone. Long the fullback, Goodson up under center. The Citadel three linemen down, three linebackers across. Goodson to throw near side, and it is caught. First down reception at the near hash mark out to the 40-yard line. That is the freshman Jason Hill with the catch and single coverage out there with Ben Roberts, the corner. A little bit of a wobbly ball from Brandon Goodson, but Jason Hill with great position on the corner, went upstairs, grabbed it, got the first down. Big conversion early for Wofford. Wofford came into the ball game converting 48% of the time. Wing bone again on first and 10. Terriers now from their 40. A toss, and Wofford's going to run a reverse. Cole Cleary looking to make the right corner, and the Citadel's going to throw him for a big loss. The free safety, Malik Diggs, coming up to make a tackle way back at the Wofford 34-yard line. It is second down and 16. Apparently, they saw some game tape from the Western Carolina game two weeks ago. Diggs did a nice job of not flowing with things and playing assignment football. And when you play, these both clubs run an option. It's got to be assignment football. Second and 16, Wofford from the 34. Two receivers left, one to the right. Goodson, shotgun snap, throws underneath the coverage. It is caught by R.J. Taylor, and then he is hip-checked to the ground immediately at the Terrier 38. A four-yard reception bringing up third and long the corner. D. Delaney, a preseason All-American, lays into Taylor with a one-time hit. R.J. had a couple of big catches down in Charleston last year against these guys. That was kind of his coming out party. Delaney, that's the way you tackle right there. Put the shoulder pads right in the thigh pads and chop their legs out. Another big third down. This one a little bit longer than the last one Wofford converted. No score, 12-18 remaining. We're in the first quarter. Wofford lining up third and 12 from their 38. They need the midfield stripe. Goodson out of the gun with a single back. Play action. Pocket breaks down. He's going to roll right. Pumps throwing deep down the far side. Overshoots R.J. Taylor incomplete. D. Delaney in pass coverage for the Bulldogs. They flush the quarterback out of the pocket. And on the run, Goodson put too much air under the football. The Terriers forced a punt. It's like David Marvin is out there. Going to have a breeze in his face. Field position is going to be 
critically important to both clubs today. David having a fine year punting the football, 47.1 yards per kick. The deep man for the Bulldogs is DeAndre Schutz. He is averaging almost 13 yards per return. That is best in the SoCon. And there is a line drive kick into the breeze. Schutz will take it near numbers at the 19, and he is pile-driven to the turf immediately. Special teams tackle made by Wofford's JoJo Tillery, and we've got a break in the action. So Wofford forced to punt on the game's first possession. We'll see the Citadel offense when we come back. No score from Gibbs. 11.55 to play in the first quarter. Located in Spartanburg, South Carolina, Wofford College combines a challenging liberal arts education with a close-knit campus community. Wofford offers a complete, transformative living and learning experience. Wofford empowers its students with skills and opportunities that employers need and graduate schools want. A Wofford graduate is prepared for what's next. Wofford College. It's your world. I see lightning in the sky. Hold me closely, my dear. Their institution and their school and a uh, bit of a reprieve from everyday life at the military school for those cadets as they've made the trip, marched in. Citadel defense doing a nice job on that first drive. Wofford got one first down, but Terriers minus three on the ground. A lot of that due to that drop for about seven or eight yard loss on the in the round play. See what the Bulldog offense can do. Offensive line left to right. Isaiah Pinson, Kyle Weaver, both preseason all-conference. The center, Tyler Davis, Drew McIntyre, and Nick Jeffries. And on first down, the quarterback, Dominique Allen, will hand it away, not surprisingly, to the fullback, Tyler Renew, who will drive forward across the 20 to the 22. So a five-yard carry on first down for Renew. Tyler Vaughn, Wofford defensive lineman, and end with the stop for the Terriers. They waste no time. Again, it's Renew right up the middle. He'll make the 25 and then get pushed back close to the 26. And that's going to bring up third down and very short. Wofford inside linebacker Detavius Wilson makes the stop. Wofford had third and long a couple of times. So it'll third short. Third down, about a yard. Up under center, it's Allen. Toss sweep, far side, first down and more. Cameron Jackson turning left corner, 25 out to the 30. A first down run for one of the A-backs in this Citadel three-back offense. Again, Tyler Vaughn with the Wofford stop, but the Citadel picking up a first down in a scoreless game. They get it out to the 31-yard line. They ran all over Chattanooga last week. This is a potent offense. And it's a handoff again right up the middle. Renew and the Terriers do a better job of clogging the middle this time, though Renew picks up close to three yards, which tells you the Citadel offensive line's getting a bit of a push right now. Tyler Vaughn in there again for Wofford. Mikkel Horton, true freshman, knows also a part of that tackle. Second and seven from the 34. This time Allen on a keeper, tripped up after trying to curl up behind right side of the line, only gets a yard. Dylan Young knifing in there. It'll be third down and six. Dylan Young doing a nice job of containment there and wrapping up a slippery quarterback in Dominique Allen. 10-13 to play first quarter. Wofford and the Bulldogs no score. The Citadel looking at third down and six from their 35. Wofford fans want to stop. Three back straight across behind Allen, who is up under center. The junior quarterback at 6'1", 217 pounds. One receiver splits to the right. And it's a fake of the give to the fullback. Toss far corner. Cam Jackson won't get the first down. Run out of bounds into the Bulldog bench at the 38-yard line. It'll be fourth down and three. Terrence Morris, inside linebacker, helping to string that thing out. It is fourth down. And now the Bulldogs will run out their punting unit. Dominique Lemon did a great job of not allowing the Citadel to set an edge. He stayed on his man and strung the play out, allowed Terrence Morris to come in and finish it off. So both clubs on their initial drives get a first down and then have to punt. The punter is Will Van Vick. He is averaging 40 and a half yards per kick. He'll take the snap 
at the 22-yard line. A good snap, and that's a kick with the breeze, and that'll sail deep. Will Gay will let it bounce at the far sideline. A nice Citadel roll inside the 15 and out of bounds at the 10. What a punt with the wind by Van Vick of 52 yards. 9.20 run remaining in the first quarter. Both teams feeling each other out early on. Wofford and the Citadel are scoreless. This is the Wofford IMG Sports Network. Our, our spotter this afternoon is Dr. David Cox, Mark Hauser, Tom Henson in the booth, Van Hip down on the sidelines, 921 remaining first quarter. Each team has had a possession. We are scoreless. We've seen a couple of punts. Wofford will take over right to left at their 10-yard line after a 53-yard punt by Will Van Vick with no return. Quarterback Brandon Goodson out of the gun, two backs behind him, two receivers left, one to the right. So no tight end in this formation. The Citadel with four down linemen. Cornerback's about five yards off on the receivers and the fake of the give by Goodson. And he's got room as he splits defenders ahead 20, 30, far numbers to the 40. Brandon Goodson will be tackled just shy of the 40-yard line. They'll mark him down at the 39, Joe Crochet. The cat linebacker finally ran him down. Brandon Goodson had a nice seam to the right. Yeah, he did, and he sold that fake really well to Chris Martin. Had two guys collapse on him, and then once he turned that corner, you're right, he got some good downfield blocking, Mark, and big-time play right there. Brandon Goodson running for 29. Terriers first and 10 from their 39. Two tight ends, wing bone this time. Hand off Nick Colvin right up into the teeth of the line from his halfback spot. He'll cross the 40 and get ahead of the 41. So two on first down for Nick Colvin, the senior from Bogart, Georgia. It's probably not too early to mention with both clubs loving the option, they, they, how much they run the ball, possessions are going to be at a premium. Yeah. <laughs> this could be a game where each club – Maybe get six or seven possessions, and that's it. Linebacker Miles Pierce with the tackle for the Bulldogs. Chris Martin checks back in at a halfback spot. Long is the fullback. Wingbone on second and eight. Tossed to Long, and as he tries to make the right corner, he is high tackled after a one-yard gain at the 42-yard line. And again, it's Miles Pierce getting a hold of Lorenzo Long up around the shoulder pads. And even a little bit higher yeah, than the yeah, shoulder yeah, pads. Maybe up in the, around the helmet area. But. Miles Pierce from Daphne, Alabama, junior linebacker. His father, Michael, played at Tulane. He's got a brother right now playing football in the SoCon at Samford. Pretty athletic family there. Third and seven coming up for Wofford. One for two on third downs today. Ball at the Terrier 42. They send two receivers to the left. Some confusion now. Timeout. And R.J. Taylor will motion left as the Terriers were lost on that thing. And Mike Ayers uses a timeout. Somebody lined up incorrectly. R.J. Taylor came in motion near side. And he, along with uh, several others on the offense, very, very animated as they come to the sideline. Wofford will be looking at third and mid when we come back to Gibbs. Seven and a half to play in the first quarter. Wofford and the Citadel scoreless on the Wofford IMG Sports Network. Terriers just burned a timeout as they were confused coming out to run a third and seven play. Lined up the wrong way. Mike Ayers uses a timeout. So now we're back. Scoreless game. 7.30 to play in the first quarter. Wofford at home looking at a third and seven call from their 42. Two receivers go to the left. Two backs behind Goodson out of the gun. Takes the snap. Handoff straight ahead. And that's a carry of one yard. And that is all. Kevin Graham with the tackle on the ball carrier. Chris Martin. As Chris Martin had nowhere to go. They high tackle as much as anybody I've yeah. seen in a long time, but clearly showing some dedication to the weight room. A lot of time high tackles, you bounce off people, but the Citadel's high tackling and sending Walford players right to the ground. Schultz is back deep for the Bulldogs, awaiting the punt at his 14-yard line. Once again, it's David Marvin out to do the kicking. He will punt from his 30-yard line. The Citadel not applying any pressure. Another line drive into the breeze. Schultz will make a juggling catch near hash at the 12. 
takes off to his left, and he is slung down after a short return at about the 14, maybe the 15-yard line. Mason Allstadt with the special teams tackle for Wofford, and the Bulldogs will start this drive at the 15. Very good work by both punters early on here. Yeah, and what's been smart with David Marvin is uh, not kicking it high and getting it in that breeze where the wind can knock it down, more of a low line drive as you said mark and the coverage good for a line drive punt yeah absolutely that punt sailed let's see 38 45 yards with just a three yard return not bad working into the breeze citadel left to right first and 10 from their 15 they took over in a scoreless game 643 to play in the first quarter and the handoff goes right up the middle to tyler renew and he'll bang his way ahead for two or three out to the 18 yard line before Tyler Vaughn and Miles Brown up front combined for the Wofford tackle. Terriers playing that 50 defense. Three down linemen with a linebacker on the outside walking up to the line of scrimmage in a two-point stance. That's Dylan Young. Now two linebackers walk up on second down. Quarterback keeper for Allen going left, and he gets nothing. And it will be third down and seven. He is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Mikkel Horton in there for Wofford. Boy, if the Terriers can bo bottle up Dominique Allen, that's a good day's work. Yeah, absolutely. He's one of the best option quarterbacks in the country. He scares you every time he's got the ball in his hands if Terrier, you're a Wofford fan. Terrier defense looking for a three and out. Third down, a long six for the Bulldogs. Up under center, the quarterback, Allen, turns, hands off to one of his halfbacks, and that's a carry straight ahead to the 20 to the 23-yard line. Reggie Williams on the rush for the Citadel, but Tommy short of the first down. Malik Rivera and Miles Brown combine on the tackle. Rivera making a start in the secondary today along with Dominique Lemon as uh, secondary coach Sheil Wood just likes them against the run as opposed to the pass yeah, a little bit better. Yeah, they're not afraid to stick their nose in there is basically what we were what we were told, and I'll tell you what, we're seeing two pretty good defenses battling so far. No score. Van Vick back out to punt, takes the snap at the 11-yard line. That's a line drive wobbler. Gay will signal for and make the fair catch at the far numbers at the Wofford 34-yard line. That's where the Terriers will go to work in a scoreless game. That's a 43-yard punt with no return. Will, so, by calling for a fair catch there, save Wofford probably 15 to 20 yards in field position. Boy, it's tricky in that breeze, yep, isn't it? very tricky. Ball spotted at the Wofford 34, so this will be the Terriers' best field position of the day as Goodson leads them out onto the field. Coming into the day, Brandon had completed 47% of his throws. Two backs behind him out of the gun, two receivers left, one to the right. The backs are long and gay. A couple of seniors back there for Wofford. Four down linemen for the Bulldogs on defense. Fake of the give, and Goodson, a big seam up the middle 40. Straight down the middle of the field to the 50. Goodson to the Citadel 40. Another big keeper for the quarterback of 26 yards. Now the Bulldogs are claiming they have come up with the football. They are claiming there's a fumble at the end of the play. Kalik Williams went running off the field. And let's see if Goodson indeed hung on to the football. Boy, that's, it was ripped out of his hands, and it ended up in the arms of Kalik Wilson. But now the officials are saying, nope, it's Wofford football. The Terriers just got a huge break. They didn't get a break. They, I mean, that was uh, enormous. That's Citadel football. That ball was out and was in the possession of the Citadel defensive player. You can see it right here as Brandon Goodson is going down. The ball is out of his arms and yep. in the arms of the Citadel player. Terriers need to take advantage of this gift the, yep. the, the officials just gave him. Kalik Williams came up with a steal of the ball, and they don't give it to him. Toss near corner and down the sideline for Wofford goes Lennox McAfee. Takes it to the 35 to the 30. Out of bounds at the Bulldog 29, 11 yards on the toss sweep to Lennox McAfee. Great block by Will Gay to spring Lennox. The previous play, I thought they were going to change things up because I saw Brandon Goodson running to the sidelines. It was because Mike Ayers was demanding that he come over and have a word of prayer with him. 420 remaining. We're in the first quarter. Wofford and the Citadel no score. Terriers driving thanks in part to a gift from the officials. Out of the gun, Goodson with a back behind him. Handoff long on first down from the Citadel 29. And Long will bull his way into two defenders and take it down to the 26 before Miles Pierce 
One of those Bulldogs in white there to stop him. Three for Lorenzo on first down. Terriers will take that, though. Oh, yeah, you'll take three yards. I'm still... Those things, uh, bad calls have a way of evening themselves out over the course of a game. You just hope it doesn't cost either team, cost them the game. Cleary goes wide to the right. That is the wide side of the field. Wide left hill. Handoff up the middle long, and he's got room. Cuts left at the 20. Lorenzo to the 10. Spins his way down to the two-yard line. All the way to the one first and goal Terriers. Lorenzo with a 25-yard dash. Great and vision. Oh, yeah. Uh, just... The vision to cut it up in there and then to bounce it out to the right. Then the spin move got him a couple of extra yards. He's got a nose for the end zone. Couldn't find it there. Dondre Copeland kept him out of the end zone. He is one of the linebackers at 207 pounds. Lorenzo Long, the conference's leading rusher with great open field cuts right there. First and goal from the one. Chase Nelson has checked in at the fullback spot. Two tight ends. Wingbone, handoff, Nelson right side, booms his way, but he doesn't quite get there. Stopped at the half-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. We're under three minutes to play in the first quarter. We're scoreless. Miles Pierce all over the place so far for the Bulldogs with the stop. Came into the week as the Bulldogs' third leading tackler on defense. I think Citadel might be a little bit back on their heels after not getting the turnover they thought they had. Gay... Nelson and Wyndham are your running backs for Wofford. Wing bone too tight. Second and goal from the half-yard line. Chase Nelson right side. Touchdown. Terriers have the lead. Terriers take advantage of what should have been a turnover yeah. and convert a touchdown. Chase Nelson finishing it off for Wofford. So Wofford scoring first here this afternoon on homecoming Saturday. Now David Marvin will look to tack on the extra point. Remember, he had a big missed extra point last year in the game between these teams down in Charleston. Good snap, spot down by Brian Sanders, and this one is good. Marvin now 22 of 22 on his PATs this season, and Wofford out to a 7 to nothing lead. Keep this in mind, the Citadel has not lost a game this year, Tom, but, boy, have they played some close ones that have all gone their way so far this season. Yeah, good point, Mark. They've been in tight battles at, to open the season against Mercer uh, on the road where they won by one. Had a tussle with a, a then healthy Furman team down in Charleston, won by five on the road at Gardner-Webb, a seven-point win. And then last week at home against Chattanooga, an eight-point win. Uh, that was a very balanced, uh, competitive first half. I thought the second half, Citadel did a tremendous job of really doing what they wanted to do on both sides of the line. Six play, 66-yard drive for Wofford. Two big chunks ripped off during that drive, one by Goodson and the other by Long all the way down to the one-yard line. Brandon Goodson's got two carries for 55 yards and a very fortunate non-fumble call. Yeah. I, Kalik Williams literally took it right out of his arms, kind of like what Dutavius Wilson did to uh, Western Carolina's Terrian Robinson on uh, Western's final possession last week up in Cullowee. Absolutely right. The ball never came out. He just took it from him. Kickoff right to left by David Marvin into the breeze. It's a line drive. It's going to be taken at the two-yard line, taken up the near numbers. 10, 15, 20, bounced outside. The ball flies in the air on the tackle and will sail out of bounds. David Marvin was in on that tackle for Wofford. Quinlan Washington, the return man for the Bulldogs. David Marvin absolutely blew him up. Helmet right on the ball. And the ball popped high in the air, but luckily for the Citadel, the play came near the sideline and it sailed out of bounds into the Terrier bench. So the Bulldogs are going to start this drive at the 27 yard line. David Marvin with some blood and adrenaline flowing. He's met by about a dozen of his teammates yeah. on the boundary celebrating that big hit he put. Yeah, he's got pretty good size for yeah, a kicker does, now. 6'2", yeah. 210, a red shirt junior. Citadel left to right. They'll operate out of the eye this time on first and 10 from their 27. Allen hands it away to the up man. And Renew will carry for about a yard to the 28, and that is all. Terriers stop that thing quickly. And again, Tyler Vaughn all over the place for Wofford as he's the first man there. 
Tyler from McDonough, Georgia, Union Grove High School, a business econ major, came to Wofford after going to high school with a former Terrier running back, Donovan Johnson. Again, Citadel out of the eye. Two left, one right, ball on the right, hash mark. Fake of the dive, Allen pitch far corner, looking to make his way left is Cameron Jackson across the 30, out of bounds into the Bulldog bench at the 33-yard line. It'll be third down and four, Jaleel Green and Malik Rivera. A couple of safeties combined to run Cameron Jackson out of bounds. Bulldogs are one for three on third downs. They need to convert here. They don't want to give it right back to Wofford. Citadel tops in the league in third down conversion rate. Came in at 52%. 7-0 Wofford leading. 1.15 to play first quarter. Third and four the Citadel from their 33. And one of the linemen jumped early and suddenly it'll be third down and nine. The right tackle Nick Jeffries came flying out of his stance before the snap. And just like Wofford's offense, if you're the Citadel and head coach Brent Thompson, you want to throw your clipboard. Yeah, you hate going from third and mid to third and long. Changes your play call. We've yet to see Dominique Allen throw the ball. He had a hand injury earlier in the season. He's only 9 of 25 this year throwing. Last week he only threw four passes in the win against Chattanooga. He went one for four for seven yards. Why well, throw it if you don't have to? Third and nine now, Bulldogs from their 28. Allen wants to throw far side, out of the reach of the intended receiver, Reggie Williams, one of the B-backs, tries to make a diving catch at the far sideline. He would have been short of the stick anyway, and it is fourth down. Wofford's defense fired up as they come up with another stop. The Citadel has to punt. I think the Bulldogs, Mark, I think they're still reeling over that, what they thought was a turnover. Yeah. I, I think it's caught them flat-footed a little bit, and they've got to – They've got to right the ship and, and turn this thing around. It's a very good team, and I su suspect they will. Will Gay drops back deep for the Terriers, taking the punt about the 27. Van Vick out of Greenville and punt. JL Man High School has the punt blocked. It's loose on the ground. The Terriers recover it at the Bulldog 19-yard line. First blocked punt of the year for one of the Wofford Terriers, and it was Bryce Motes, reserve wide receiver. Getting in there and getting a hand on the thing, and the Terriers will have tremendous field position. Not really a full sellout of a blitz or a, a rush of the punt, but just a nice individual play, and Mike Ayers has preached as long as we've known him, when you have a chance to make a play, make it, and he did it right there. I think it was actually Terrence Morris that got the punt. First and 10 at the 19-yard line in the Citadel end of the field. Can Wofford take advantage of a very short field? Out of the gun, Goodson. Hand off right up the middle long, and he will get a yard at best. As he churns right into the center of the line, he is stopped by the middle linebacker, Tevin Floyd, a good one. Had 11 tackles last year against Wofford, two and a half behind the line of scrimmage. Wofford doesn't have to snap it again this quarter if they don't want to, and why would you let this thing roll down and go the other direction? Terriers on a touchdown run by Chase Nelson with a 7-0 lead. And I believe Wofford indeed will let the clock run out. Second quarter when we come back on homecoming Saturday here at Gibbs Stadium. Your score after one. Wofford seven, the Citadel nothing. This is Terrier football on the Wofford IMG Sports Network. These are the student athletes. This is where they train. These are their homes. This is where they become Rhodes Scholars and academic All-Americans. These are the athletes they've always admired. This is where champions are crowned and moments are made. This is the Southern Conference. Game day. Last season you were watching football at the mercy of that loathed cable company and your weird roommate with the ornery chinchilla. But today you're going to watch wherever the wild you want. You go here, Wild Wing Cafe. They've got all the games on more screens than you can count. And cute roommates. This is just the wild you need. So go wild, super fan. We can't help you choking QB, but we do have cold beer. At Ingalls, we have a very special family. 
a family of farmers, ranchers, and dairymen, clerks, butchers, and bakers, deli workers, pharmacists, and florists. We work hard every day to bring you the very best, and we'll continue to wake up every morning and work as hard as you do. This is our town, and we built this community together. Ingalls, your neighbor for over 50 years. Red 97! Check! Red 97! Did you say 97? Yes. You know, that reminds me of Geico's 97% customer satisfaction rating. 97%? Helped by Geico's fast and friendly claim service. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, baby. Geico's as fast and friendly as it gets. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Wofford with a 7-0 lead over 6th ranked the Citadel as we come back to start the second quarter on a sunny, breezy homecoming day at Gibbs Stadium. Terriers trying to take advantage of a punt block by Terrence Morris setting them up first down at the Bulldog 19. Now it's second and nine at the 18. Terriers left to right in the second quarter driving toward the veranda lot and the Richardson Center. Wofford will go out of the wing bone with one receiver to the left, tight end lined up to the left. Handoff Lorenzo Long in the Citadel waiting on him. No gain, it'll be third down and We'll call it eight. Maybe he got to the 17 and a half yard line. Kevin Graham, defensive tackle from Durham, North Carolina. Plugged up any hole there might have been. Citadel tightening up in the red zone. Wofford third and eight at the 18 right hash. Two receivers go left. The outside man is Taylor. One man short split to the right. Goodson out of the gun. Man in motion to the near side. And again, it's a handoff long. Picking his way right. He's got a hole. He takes it to the 15 to the 10. Wheels away from a tackler momentarily. Pushes the pile down to the nine. Tom, he is awful close to a first down. You want to talk about a second effort. That was second, third, and fourth effort that time by Lorenzo. Terriers running between the tackles. Nice spin move again to get out of the grasp of Tevin Floyd. And he got the first down. Wow. Or did he? Yes, he did. Yeah. First and goal. I thought he was short. Ben Roberts, the corner from Statesboro, Georgia, finally wrestled him to the ground. That was all leg drive by Lorenzo Long. First and goal from the nine right hash mark. Long the fullback, two tight ends, wing bone. On first down, counter give to the left, and Hunter Windham will struggle his way to the seven. He fumbles the ball. It is out at the six-yard line. The Citadel claiming they have come up with it. Let's wait for the signal. And, yep, it's Citadel football. Terriers and Hunter Windham cough it up inside the 10-yard line. The corner, D. Delaney with the recovery, and the Terriers turn it over at the most inopportune of times. He may have been down. In fact, he was down, but let's call it even now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll call it even because Hunter Wyndham's backside was clearly on the ground. But Brandon Goodson fumbled earlier, so all knotted up here with uh, fairness. We don't, the- we don't do review in the SOCON, but somehow things even out. That's right. So the Citadel will start this drive at their six-yard line right to left. 7-0 Wofford leading, 13.54 to play in the second quarter. They go to their version of the wing bone. Man in motion right, Reggie Williams from a halfback spot. Hand off to the fullback and very little doing over right guard for the ball carrier. Detavius Wilson with the stop on Tyler Renew. We have yet to see the reserve running back, fullback, Isaiah Smith play. A junior at 242. He's a real battering ram. Renew getting the bulk of the work. He carried the ball against Chattanooga last week for 85 yards, 15 carries. Bulldogs second and nine from their seven. Allen under center. Again, their wing bone in motion right. Williams again a handoff, and Renew has a crease up the middle. First down run. Takes it to the 15 to the 20. Juke step left to the 25, and he'll finally be knocked over at the 27. Renew found a gap for 20 yards. Tyreek Lyles, Terrier outside linebacker from Duncan and Burns High School, with the tackle as he followed Renew up the field. Somebody missed a tackle near the line of scrimmage, and Renew made Wofford pay. 
So the Citadel first and 10 from the 27. They have wide outs either side. No tight ends in this formation. Their wing bone with Renew, the fullback. Wofford, two down linemen, four on the line of scrimmage. Toss to Reggie Williams. Wants to turn right corner and forget about it. Wofford waiting on him that time. Jaleel Green, the first man there. Tyler Vaughn then finished him off. That play actually loses a yard back to the 26. A little bit of a high pitch, and I think that kind of got him out of rhythm on the play, allowed Wofford to close in a little quicker, and Williams wasn't able to turn the corner. Wofford 2-1 and one in conference play. The Bulldogs a perfect 4-0. and oh. The Citadel second and 11 now from their 26. Again, their wing bone set, play action. Allen wants to throw with time to the far side, dropped. Pass was intended at the 40-yard line for wide receiver DeAndre Schultz, and he simply dropped the ball. He left his feet, and the ball hit him right square in the chest as he was up in the air. And he couldn't hang on. Yeah, it went right through his hands, off his shoulder, off his front of his shoulder pads. Dominique Allen took a pretty good shot right there from Tyreek Lyles. Citadel looking at third and long now. Schultz has only caught two passes this year. In fact, the Citadel's leading receivers this year have all caught the ball three times. This is not an air raid offense by any stretch. Third down and 11 at the 26 in the Terrier end of the field. Two men went in motion at the same time, and we get a flag. Throw to the far side by Allen. Too high and incomplete out at the 30-yard line near the boundary. Wofford will wave off the penalty as two Bulldogs motioned on the snap. That's going to be an illegal shift. But in the end, it doesn't matter. It is fourth down. And Wofford will force the Bulldogs to punt. Terrier's about to get the ball back with a 7-0 lead and 12.08 remaining here in the second quarter. So Wofford gets a break where they don't call Brandon Goodson for a fumble when he did. They convert it into a touchdown. Citadel gets a break and that Hunter Windham does fumble the football, or, or doesn't, but they call it a fumble and they can't really do anything with it other than the renew first down run. There's a rumor we're going to replay in this league next year. Ah, replay's overrated. <laughs> Slows the game down. Van Vick out to punt again for the Bulldogs. He's got a three-man shield in front of him. Wofford coming with pressure. This one he gets away. The last one was blocked. It'll sail to the far side where Will Gay will make a fair catch at the far boundary of the 27-yard line. Solid punt by Van Vick of over 50 yards. And we've got a break 12.01 remaining in the first half. Wofford's lead over the Citadel is 7-0 on the Wofford IMG Sports Network. All right, we will head downstairs to Van Hip after this next play from scrimmage. Wofford about to go on offense with a 7-0 lead. 12.01 to play in the first half here at Gibbs. Terriers following a 53-yard punt by Will Van Vick for the Bulldogs will start this drive. First and 10 at their 27-yard line. Quarterback Brandon Goodson out of the gun with two backs, two receivers right, ball on the left hash, and a handoff will go straight up the middle for about two yards to the 29-yard line as Lennox McAfee is the ball carrier. Van Hip on the sidelines. Van. This, uh, let me tell you, this terror defense is for real. So far, the number one rushing defense in the country is getting the best of the number one rushing offense. And you talk about the 600 Citadel cadets. Look at the Citadel fans they brought from Charleston. Yeah. Even back when App State and Georgia Southern win the league, I don't remember a team traveling this well to Gibbs Stadium. Thank you, sir. Second down and eight Terriers from their 29. Hand off to the lone back out of the gun, and Andre Stoddard out of Greenville and St. Joseph High School crosses the 30, slanting left to the 35 to the 36. He is close to the first down. In the secondary, the corner, Ben Roberts with the tackle for the Bulldogs. Andre Stoddard, 5'10", 230, a sophomore with that carry. It'll be third and short. Terriers two for four on third down conversions. Wofford with a 7-0 lead, 11 minutes to play first half. Third down and a yard from the 36. Two receivers right, the tight end Gouger will motion right and set up as a wing. Handoff Stoddard bangs into a defender going left at the line of scrimmage, and I don't think he got there. I think he's going to be about a half yard short as Joe Crochet was there to wrap him up for the Bulldogs, and that was a form tackle. Now Stoddard spun forward to his right after the initial hit, but not enough for the first down. It is fourth down and a yard. 
big time play by Joe Crochet. He, he's one of my favorite linebackers in this league. And, and as you said, Mark, picture perfect tackle there by the senior. And Wofford's going to try to play the field position game. Crochet out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, a fifth year senior. Here's David Marvin to punt with his right foot. Spiraling line drive with the breeze. It'll bounce in front of the return man and then take a good terrier roll up the far sideline to the 20. It'll roll inside the 15 down to the 11. Boy, both punters having a tremendous day as that punt is good for 53 yards by David Marvin. 7 nothing. Wofford leading, 10 minutes to play in the half. Terriers, Terriers lead it over the Citadel 7-0. We have exactly 10 minutes remaining here in the first half. Two years ago in here, Wofford held off the Citadel on the game's last play as the quarterback for the Bulldogs made a run for it. Wofford hung on and won by four points, keeping him out as Stephen Cornelier made a tackle inside the one-yard line. That extended Wofford's head-to-head -head winning streak to 16. Last year, the Citadel snapped it emphatically in Charleston, winning 39-12. On first down, a carry right up the middle, and that's a booming run across the 15, out close to the 17-yard line. For Tyler Renew, he gets six on first down before John Patterson stops him. Terrier's lone score coming on a touchdown run by Chase Nelson. A one-yard run. Wingbone for the Bulldogs. Carry again right up the middle for the B-back or the fullback if he were in Wofford's system, and Renew fires ahead for two more behind center, and it will be third down and two as Chris Boudreau, who has missed some time with injuries this year at the nose spot from Mobile, makes the tackle for Wofford, a fourth-year junior. Terrier fans again want a three and out. Wofford just gave it up after three plays and a punt. Bulldogs third and two from the 19. Two halfbacks, a fullback, one receiver split to the left. Terriers, three linemen down. Renew, handoff right up the middle, churns into the center of the line, crosses the 20. I think he's got it. They're going to spot him down just ahead of the 21-yard line. First down run for Renew for the Bulldogs. And again, Boudreaux in on the tackle. Wofford will check in. Lincoln Stewart at a linebacker spot. Is that Dottavius Wilson coming off, holding his left arm? Nope, it's John Patterson coming out for Wofford. Grabbing his left arm, he's hurt. First and 10 Bulldogs from their 21 and a half. Wofford lineman shifting to the right on defense. One receiver left, a tight end lined up to the right. Fake of the dive, pitch far corner, and Cameron Jackson is hog tied at the 20 yard line. Malik Rivera firing up from his safety spot, throws him for a two yard loss. That's why Malik Rivera is in there. The run support for that safety is uh, one of his fortes. Shook off a would be stiff arm and wrestled him to the ground. Clock rolls down to eight minutes to play in the half. 7-0 Wofford, Malik Rivera from St. John's, Florida, a redshirt sophomore at 5'11", 200. Bulldogs now second and 12 from the 20. Reggie Williams in motion right, play action, throw down the middle, and it's caught by Rudder Brown. Allen put it right where he needed to. Rudder Brown with a catch up over his head at the Wofford 45. He takes it down to the 44. A first down reception for Brown of 36 yards. Malik Rivera with the tackle in the secondary. Little play action there, and of course you're gonna be thinking run, but that was a well-thrown ball by Dominique Allen, and Rudder Brown had a big game against the Terriers last year. First and 10 Bulldogs now on the Wofford side of the 50 at the 44-yard line. Rudder Brown with just his fourth catch of the year. They go out of the wing bone in motion right. Williams handoff right up the middle to Renew, and he'll grind his way for two yards to the Wofford 42-yard line. Terriers leading 7-0. Tackle made by Miles Brown in the middle for Wofford. 310-pound sophomore from suburban D.C., Chevrolet, Maryland, and Sidwell Friends High School. Two receivers go to the right, a single man to the left. Bulldogs second down and eight now at the Wofford 42. They'll work out of the eye this time. Play action for Allen. Throws over the middle. Incomplete. 
Jaleel Green and pass defense knocked that away from the receiver, Cameron Jackson. And it will be third down and eight. Bulldog fans right there, Tom, wanted a pass interference call. It was close. Uh, they probably should get one. Looked like the Terrier defender was yeah. all over the back. Jaleel Green of the receiver. So the Terriers with a chance to get a stop. Third and eight coming up for the Citadel. Maybe four down territory here, depending on what they do. Two receivers go to the right with Jackson in the slot. One man comes to the left. It's Brown, a short split. I set on third down and eight from the Terrier 42. Give right up the middle to the fullback. And a carry by Renew inside the 40 to the 39. But he is well short of the stick. It'll be fourth down and five. Terrier stop made by the aforementioned reserve linebacker Lincoln Stewart out of Deltona, Florida. They got a penalty flag in the secondary, and there was some jawing going on and also a shove during the play. I think this may be on the Citadel as one of their wide receivers over there, Jorian Jordan and Dominique Lemon, were battling. After the play, personal foul, late hit, number three on the offense. Yeah. It's a 15 yard penalty. Fourth down. The, the key there is this after the play, and it was Jordan. And excuse me, it wasn't Lemon for Wofford. It was Watson. So what would have been fourth down and five and maybe manageable in four-down territory becomes fourth and forever, and now they have to punt. The ball will be walked back to the Bulldog 46-yard line, and that will make it fourth down and nearly 20. So a break for the Terriers. Wofford also had Dylan Young talking a little something to the Citadel players as that was being hashed out by the officials. He has to be a little bit careful. It's a little diving at the knees. Yeah. I don't know if I want to say completely dirty, but that far away, uh -huh. <laughs> it's probably unnecessary. Let's, let's just say that. Let's say overzealous and dangerous all at yeah, once. Yeah, and good, good job of officiating there. The Bulldogs looking at fourth down and close to 20. And now they've got some confusion. Well, Wofford's got some confusion. Citadel's got some confusion. I don't think Wofford knows 100% for certain that the Citadel's going to run out their punting unit. And the Citadel head coach right now, Brent Thompson, engaging the officials at the far sideline. Timeout. The Citadel. All right, there you go. Their first charge timeout of the half. It's the 32nd. No. Media timeout. It is a media timeout. Wofford up 7-0, 624 to play first half. More in a moment on the Wofford IMG Sports Network. Terriers lead at 7-0 over the Bulldogs of the Citadel. 624 remaining in the first half. John Patterson, Wofford inside linebacker, a starter from Lilburn, Georgia, was just carted off the field. Came off, Tom, holding his right arm. So let's hope it's not too serious. We saw Lincoln Stewart enter in his absence and make a tackle immediately at inside linebacker. And now as we come back to play the Citadel, faced with fourth and long following an unnecessary roughness penalty. The Citadel cadets are here en masse, some wearing their fatigues, others in shirt sleeves with the white shirts. The punter, Will Van Vick, back out there for the Military College of the South, as it is also called. He'll take the snap at the 31. No pressure applied. Gets away a booming spiral. Gay will come up and let it bounce over his head, and it checks up, and it dies at the half-yard line. The Citadel is going to pin the Terriers deep. One of the Bulldogs was able to bat it away from the goal line as it was rolling on the ground. He bats it back out to the three, and that's where it will be ruled down. What a, what a punt. Oh, my. Just beautiful. Like a little soft eight iron. I don't even think they had to touch it. Eh, maybe so, but good play there by the Bulldogs. Downing Walker deep, deep, deep in their own end of the field. 51-yard punt. He had 54 yards to work with. So now Wofford with a 7-0 lead. 6-12 to play second quarter. We'll go to work left to right. Starting at their three-yard line. Goodson out of the gun will take the snap a yard deep in the end zone. Hand off Lorenzo Long straight ahead for a yard at best. Hey, what? These are two outstanding defenses. 
Jonathan King and Kevin Graham, a couple of inside tackles combined on the stop. King from Statesville, North Carolina, a junior at 248. Graham, a sophomore at 287. Citadel not huge on either line, offense or defense, but very quick. Quick, yeah. Athletic. Second down and nine. Chris Martin has checked in at a halfback spot. Terriers with two backs. Goodson out of the gun. Again, it's long with the handoff. And again, nothing doing. Wanted to follow the left side of his line, Demel and Miller, but there's nothing there. Citadel very demonstrative after making that play. Kalik Williams comes up from his strong safety spot. Citadel fans want to stop now. It'll be third down and nearly 10. And if Wofford has to punt, they'll do it out of their end zone if they don't get significant yards here. This is where you want to be safe. Throwing something here out of your end zone it could be disastrous. Five minutes to play in the half. Terriers up 7-0. Wofford third down will call it 10 from just outside their three-yard line. They line up in the wing bone, and Mike Ayers is going to use a timeout. Terriers use their second timeout of the half. The Citadel with two remaining. Let's go downstairs, Van Hip. John Patterson, I just talked to the team docs, and uh, it is an upper left arm uh, shoulder injury, and he is out for the rest of the game. All right, thank you, Van. That's a loss for Wofford. Yeah. yeah. That's a big-time run stopper inside linebacker for the Terriers. And we talked about the rushing offense as the Citadel leads the country at 381 yards a game. Terriers fourth at 312. What are they doing so far today? Citadel's got 68 on the ground. Wofford's got 118. So the, I'd say the defenses are winning this. Wofford a year ago in Charleston at Johnson Haygood Stadium. Tom finished the game with 124 rushing yards in that loss. And perhaps the biggest number was the fact Lorenzo Long was limited to 21 yards on nine carries. I think they keyed on him. I think so. Today... Nine carries, 41 yards. A little bit better. He had that big 25-yard run to get uh, the Terriers set up first and goal at the one-yard line, and Chase Nelson eventually took it in on second down. That's the game's only score, 7-0 Wofford. Third down, we'll call it 10 for the Terriers from just outside their three-yard line. Wingbone in motion left, Wyndham. Now he'll set back up at the right halfback spot. Again, he goes in motion. Goodson fakes left, runs the option right. Pitch away to Gay. Sidesteps a man at the five. He has a blocker to the 10. Will Gay, I believe, has the first down. He does as he stumbles down at the 15-yard line. What a huge run by the fifth-year senior, Will Gay, as he made two guys miss. That's demoralizing for a defense. Great pitch by Brandon Goodson, and Will Gay shed that first would-be tackler, shook him off, allowed him to pick up the first down, and you're still thinking, man, we're going to get this ball midfield at worst. But now Wofford's picked up a first down and got a little bit of room to work with. Malik Diggs and Miles Pierce finally combine on the tackle. Wofford first and 10 from the 15 out of the gun. Goodson handoff long. This time he's got a little daylight. Cut back to his left and he'll take it out to the 20. A five-yard run on first down for Lorenzo Long. Stopped by the middle linebacker Tevin Floyd out of Tallahassee. A senior, 6'1", 238. Lorenzo gets up not happy, Mark. Uh, this is physical. Yeah. This is old school football with some licks being thrown and the echo of the whistle is what everybody's playing through. Two receivers go to the left. Goodson will work from the gun with one receiver to the right. That's the short side. Two backs on second and five. Toss near corner to Long and he is upended right about the line of scrimmage. He'll fall ahead for a yard. Kalik Williams, the rover back. They call him the rover. He's basically the strong safety. The team's leading tackler stop Lorenzo. It'll be third down and four. He only got a yard there. Another thing I've noticed thus far in this game, both teams are tackling extremely well. Yes. Wofford about to run their sixth play of the drive. They lead it 7 0, 3 15 remaining. First half clock rolling. Third and four Terriers from their 21 right hash. Goodson checking off with two backs behind him out of the gun. Two receivers left, a tight end to the left. And it's a handoff up the middle to Will Gay, and he's going to be stopped short of the first down. He is flattened at the 23-yard line. Again, Tevin Floyd, the middle linebacker there for the Citadel. 
And it will be fourth down and about two. And if Mike Ayers was tempted, not in this ball game. He's going to punt it away. David Marvin out to punt. Now Wofford will let the clock wind as much as possible. We're at 2.30 to play. The play clock at 14 seconds. The snapper out of Dorman High School right here in Spartanburg is Ross Hammond, a three-man shield in front of Marvin. Snap comes with five on the play clock. That's a wobbler into the wind. Fair catch made by the Citadel and DeAndre Schultz at the 36-yard line. So Marvin booting into the breeze. Not too shabby right there as that punt goes for 41. And uh, the big key there, Schultz, a very good return man, does not return it. Citadel's got zero punt return yards today, which for one of the best in the league has to make Wofford happy. So here's the deal for the Citadel, Tom. They have 216 to work with and two timeouts. 7 nothing. Wofford leading, 216 to play in the first half. Last year in Charleston, Wofford was down at the break 21 to 6. And didn't seem that close. Dominique Allen out of their wing bone set. Wide outs either side, no tight ends. Man in motion right, handoff up the middle, and Renew will back his way into the pile and stretch out to the 39-yard line. So he gets three. Some of the Bulldog fans across the way making some noise on that play. Mikkel Horton, Terrence Morris combining on the tackle. I think you can find some extracurricular happenings after yeah. every play. <laughs> There's a lot of it going on, and I'd imagine if we had them mic'd up, a lot of it wouldn't be for air. Nope. Second and seven from the 39. Wide outs either side. Three backs nearly straight across with Renew the fullback behind Allen. Fake of the dive. Wanting to make right corner on the pitch and going absolutely nowhere is Rod Johnson. He has stood up and sat down for a loss by Detavius Wilson. Mark, this freshman can flat out play some football. He's got a nose for it. And you talk about a fundamentally sound tackler. Detavius showed it on that play. Citadel again, third and long. They're two for six and, on third down conversions and today. And they're in no hurry now. Play clock at 20, game clock down to 107. Wofford does have one timeout if they want to use it. Rod Johnson's first carry of the day went for a loss of three. He's out of 96 South Carolina, a redshirt freshman. Last year, he lost his season due to a medical redshirt. He was injured after playing two games. And now, interestingly, with a third and ten coming up, you just heard the official, the Citadel's going to burn a timeout on third down and ten. Was it disorganization? No, they just were letting the play clock wind down. Okay. Run out the clock. uh, as best they could. I think Wofford, I think both teams are probably content to go in the way it is right now and see what uh, kind of adjustments they can make in the second half. The word slobber knocker comes to mind at this stage of the day. Absolutely. This is the kind that, by the way, if you're Mike Ayers, this is as close to football heaven as you can get. He loves these kind of games. It's It's been well played for the most part. 52 seconds remaining in the first half. The Citadel faced with third and long. Third and 10 from their 36 right hash mark. Going right to left. Driving toward the Terrier vision board. Three backs behind the quarterback. Allen under center. Wide outs either side. Wofford three linemen down. Allen counter give to the right. Rod Johnson makes right corner. Has room down the far numbers. First down run. 40-45 to the 50. Rod Johnson will go out of bounds at the Wofford 49. That is a huge conversion. Malik Rivera finally shouldered him to the boundary. Just like Wofford got a big conversion from Will Gay. Rod Johnson doing the job right there for the Citadel. Clock stopped as he went out of bounds. At the Wofford 48-yard line, we're down to 45 seconds to play in the half. The Citadel trying to make a dent in this thing. They're down seven zip. Three backs for Allen, two halfbacks, and a B-back, the fullback. Play action, Dominique Allen to throw, gets it away, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the far side at the 40, return to the 45 to the 47. That is Dylan Young with the pick. It'll be Wofford football. Throw it right to him. He's right there in the passing lane, and Allen threw it right to Dylan Young. Wofford football out at the 48-yard line, and their end of the field, Dylan Young with an eight-yard return off the pick, and you're right, he put it right in the numbers. They were looking for Rudder Brown, the wide receiver out there near the flat. 
Dominique Allen throwing his second pick of the year. Now, Wofford, according to my book, with one timeout remaining. That's right. They have 37 seconds to work with. The wind is at their back. And uh, David Marvin, as we saw last week, has a leg to kick it a long, long way. First and 10 from the 48. Rolling right, Goodson throws back across the field to his left, caught by the tight end Gouger at the Bulldog 48. He takes it to the 45 to the 44-yard line before he's run out by Kalik Williams. That'll stop the clock with 31 seconds remaining. There's no doubt the Terriers are close to David Marvin's range. Another 8, 10 yards, they're there. As you said, the 57-yarder at Western, and there's a healthy breeze. Got the timeout in your back pocket so you can use the middle of the field. Second down, we'll call it two at the Bulldog 44. Goodson from the gun, two receivers right with Gouger in the slot, one man to the left. And to hand off long, makes a man miss and cuts left. 40, Lorenzo, far sideline 30 to the 25. Lorenzo long out of bounds at the Bulldog 23-yard line. That'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to play. Again, Kalik Williams with the tackle for the Bulldogs. A great job by the left side of the line to seal things off. And a nice job by Lorenzo finishing that run. Brandon Goodson's just going to clock it right there. That'll make it second and 10 at the 22. Goodson clocking the ball with 20 seconds to play in the half. Boy, Lorenzo cut to his left time, and there was just one guy out there, and he made a miss. When you're a running back, I don't care who you're playing for. You get out there and you see one guy, you've got uh, your eyes get a little bit bigger because you're thinking, if I can make him miss, there's going to be some yards in front of me. And he's already running downhill to begin with. Gay and Long are your running backs. Goodson out of the gun, two receivers right, one to the left. Wofford second and 10 at the Bulldog, 22. Goodson running the option right, wants to keep. And one of the Bulldogs had an angle on him and throws him for a two-yard loss at the 24. It was Miles Pierce. Mike now Ayers, it'll be third and 12. Yeah, excuse me, Mark. Mike Ayers is going to let this thing run down to probably three seconds, call his timeout, and send David Marvin out to see if you can time get out. a 10-point lead. Walford, your third and final charge time out of the half. All right, so the line of scrimmage is the 24. The hash mark is on the right side of the field. That's where the ball spotted on the right hash. And David Marvin, a right-footed kicker, when we get back to action, will try a 41-yard field goal with the wind helping him out. And he'll try to angle it through into the veranda lot and extend Wofford's lead to two scores. 7-0 Terriers lead, three seconds to play in the first half. This would be a nice bonus field goal for Wofford. We kind of assumed it was going to be 7-0 at the break. Yeah, absolutely. It's almost like you're stealing some points because... Sutherland picked up that big first down on the run on third and long, and then the interception by Dylan Young uh, set Wofford up and a, a pass play to Gouger and then a long run by Lorenzo Long. So what can the junior kicker do? I had an opportunity to see David last night, and I said, it's the kind of game it could come down to you. And yeah. he goes, I hope it does. I like that attitude. David Marvin on his field goal tries this year is 7 out of 10. This is well within his range. A 41 yard try out of the hole to Brian Sanders. Hammond will be the snapper. And before he kicks it. Timeout. Yep. The Citadel. They're going to ice him. Third and final charge time out of the half. So they'll wait, David Marvin, make David Marvin wait a little bit longer. What I like there is they didn't, uh, Ross Hammond didn't snap it. So yeah, David he didn't. Didn't, didn't go with that to go through all the thing. He went through his his motion of just the practice, but we see so often guys they snap it and go ahead and kick it, they make it, then they come back the next time and miss it. Yeah, ask your talking about you, NC State. Yeah, ask your nearest Clemson fan. Look at the Southern Conference standings, the Citadel atop at four and oh, Chattanooga four and one. Chattanooga in action today against ETSU. I'm guessing they won't have much trouble. Samford 3-1, and one, and then you see the Terriers 2-1. and one. Wofford next week will host Mercer. The Citadel next week will host East Tennessee State. Um, no more timeouts for any, either club, so this should be the last play of the half. David Marvin, 7 for 10 on his tries this year. This will be a 41-yard attempt, right hash mark, trying to add to the lead. Final play of the half. Kick away, end over end, all sorts of distance, and he nailed it. 
David Marvin with a 41-yard field goal, and Wofford will go to the locker room with a two-score lead. We have reached the half here at Gibbs Stadium on homecoming Saturday. Your score, the Wofford Terriers 10 and the sixth-ranked Citadel Bulldogs nothing. This is Terrier football from IMG. My name is Katie Burline and I'm a student athlete at Wofford College. When I was first looking at schools to come to, then I was mainly looking at the balance between academics and athletics. Um, from a young age, I've always known that I wanted to be a physician and go to medical school after college. And so I was mainly looking for somewhere with an academic program that would prepare me well for that. Um, and then kind of secondary to that, I was looking for a place where I could compete athletically and be challenged at that level. Um, and that's what I found at Wofford. soccer since I was three. It's always been a huge part of my life. It's a family thing. I started running track my junior year of high school just kind of for fun, just to see if I could do well at it. Um, I actually ended up loving it, did it my junior and senior year. Um, I didn't come to college with the intention of running track as well. I committed for soccer, came for soccer. The track coach approached me and said, hey, we need you. And coming off of a great freshman experiences and all Avius Wilson. That should be, both of those should be great games. Of course, Wofford always uh, seems to play firm and tough and vice versa, no matter what the records are. Yeah, no matter where they play, too. Uh, Furman's certainly had the Terriers number there in green with the last eight meetings the home team has won. Siddle, on the other hand, will come home next week. They've got East Tennessee State and then home for Sanford, which could be a huge game. They're at VMI and at North Carolina, stepping up to the FBS to uh, close out their season. Wofford will kick off to start the second half. The Citadel won the opening toss and deferred, so they will start with the ball here in the third quarter. Wofford at home, black tops, gold letters and numbers, gold pants, gold helmets, Citadel on the road in the white tops, light blue letters and numbers, silver pants. The kickoff by Marvin will sail deep into the end zone, and the return man for the Citadel, Kafari Buffalo will simply uh, drop it, and then the ball will go out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. So the Citadel will start this drive at the 25, moving right to left. 10 nothing. Wofford with the lead. But you were making stuff up over uh -uh. there. Uh, you're not. Did you see the name? I saw him. Kafari Buffalo. It's my name of the year so far from Sumter and Lakewood High School. All right, Citadel back out onto the field. Dominique Allen, their quarterback, limited somewhat in the first half through an interception from Richmond Hill, Georgia, a junior at 6'1", 217. Two tight ends, two B-back, or one B-back and an A-back for the Bulldogs. The B-back, the fullback we call him, is Renew, quarterback keeper, wanting to go left, and that'll be a carry of about two for Dominique Allen before the Terriers drive him backwards. They got to get Dominique Allen going. He only carried the ball twice in the first half for two yards. Last year against Wofford, Allen was the big story in the win over the Terriers. 72 rushing yards, two touchdowns, threw for 125. Terrence Morris had a very good angle to take care of the quarterback there from his linebacker spot. Second down and eight from the 27. Again, two tight receivers. They're lining up everybody tight for the Bulldogs. Wofford, three down linemen, four on the line of scrimmage. Handoff for a new behind the right side of the line, and he'll take it out to the 30. It'll be third and five as he picks up three. Dylan Young and Datavius Wilson. Couple of linebackers there to stick Renew. And Wofford's defense with a chance for a quick three and out to start the second half. Latavius Wilson had six tackles to lead Wofford in the first half. He's from Hartsville, South Carolina. A true freshman. Wide outs either side. Third down and five for the Bulldogs from the 30. Renew is the fullback. Two halfbacks, one either side of him. 
Allen going to pitch it to the near side, looking to make the corner. Cam Jackson, and he is run down, tackled by Dotavius Wilson as he got him by the ankles. What a burst of speed by Dotavius Wilson. I thought Cam Jackson was going to be able to turn the corner and have that first down, but Dotavius Wilson makes a spectacular individual play to drop him short of the first down, and Wofford gets exactly what they wanted, a three and out. 6'1", 230 pounds, and his career is just beginning. I, you know, we talked about him being all freshman. I may have to start thinking about him for all conference. Here's Will Van Vick to do the punting. He's been very busy today. Will Gay back deep for Wofford. Van Vick gets away a wobbling spiral. Fair catch signaled for. Gay fighting the breeze drops to his knees to field it. A fair catch made at the 26-yard line. I think he was also fighting the sun, Mark. 43-yard punt for Van Vick and a fair catch at the other end. So now Wofford, after the defense comes up with a three and out, sends out the offense with a 10-0 lead over the Citadel. Remember, the Terriers on their final possession of the half got a field goal kick out of David Marvin as they took advantage of an interception by Dylan Young. Terriers first and 10 from the 26, handoff right up the middle, and the ball carrier will be stood up. Will Gay has his helmet come off after he manages a yard or two. Stopped by Miles Pierce. Boy, we've called his name a bunch today on defense, and Gay has to come off as he lost his helmet. Lennox McAfee, Hunter Windham will come out to run at halfback. Miles Pierce, that's his ninth tackle today. That's a lot. That's busy. Came into the day with 28 total tackles on the season. Second down, we'll call it a long eight for the Terriers, long with the handoff, and again right up the middle. He's tripped up before he can get ahead of steam, and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down, we'll call it eight. Middle linebacker Tevin Floyd with the tackle. If you like old-time football, welcome into Gibbs Stadium. <laughs> Third down and eight. Now the Citadel fans calling for a three and out. Wide left, R.J. Taylor. Hill will come to the right. That's the short side. Windham in motion left. Option run to the right. Toss away up the sideline with the carry. McAfee to the 30. He'll be shoved out of bounds at the 33. That's a four-yard carry, and that'll make it fourth down and four. Tom, they came to the short side that time. One of the Citadel players, Ryan Wright, passed him, and Lennox stepped out of bounds, didn't get the first. So now the Terriers are going to have to punt. Malik Diggs, the free safety, was the guy who chucked him to the boundary. He's out of Laurenburg, North Carolina, a Shrine Bowler. So he played for the Tar Heel Shrine Bowl team here at Gibbs Stadium after his senior year of high school. Back deep, DeAndre Schultz for the Bulldogs. He has yet to return a punt today. David Marvin's had a good day punting the ball. The Citadel not coming after him. A line drive spiral to the far side. It'll bounce past Schultz at the 20 and kick on into the end zone for a touchback. So officially, that is a 67-yard punt for David Marvin. The good news for Wofford with the net and the touchback. It's still a 47-yard kick. We've had a couple of three and outs to start the second half. Wofford leads 10-0, 11.35 to play in the third. The fullback is Renew. Wofford with five on the line of scrimmage. Handoff, and that's Reggie Williams following the right side of his line, and he'll force his way ahead for about three to the 23. So now third and seven coming up. Mikkel Horton with the Wofford tackle, the true freshman from Lexington, Kentucky, and Bryan Station High School. And Tom, will we see yet another three and out? Citadel's so three for eight on third down conversions. Wofford up 10-0, 10.38 remaining third quarter. The Citadel, this time with two backs, two receivers to the left, one to the right, back to throw Allen. He'll lob it down the middle of the field, and it's almost intercepted. The ball will fall incomplete at the Bulldog 38-yard line. Devin Watson had a shot at that pick. He dove for the ball, dove forward to the turf, Official couldn't hang on, out. and Devin Watson player. is hurt. 
Devin Watson down on the ground after nearly intercepting that pass, and the trainers immediately out to look at him. We'll take a break. Wofford leads 10-0. This is the Wofford IMG Sports Network. Chase Nelson with a one-yard touchdown run in the first quarter. David Marvin with a 41-yard field goal on the final play of the first half. And that's all you're scoring so far this afternoon here in Spartanburg. 10-25 remaining in the third quarter. Wofford with a 10-0 lead over the Citadel Bulldogs. And the Terrier defense has just come up with another stop. The Citadel will punt on fourth and seven, a three and out. Looks like Devin Watson is going to be okay. Yeah, I think he got the wind knocked out of him. Not okay. John Patterson possible. Checked him out for a neck injury, but uh, he will not return today. Van Vick back out there to punt. He's an upstate native from Greenville. Gets away a wobbler into the breeze. It'll bounce well in front of the return man. And it's picked up on a hop by one of the Terriers and then returned to the Citadel 48-yard line. It was Terrence Morris who picked up that ball on the bounce at about the Wofford 47, 48 yard line. He caught the ball with his back to the defenders, pivoted, went upfield inside the 50 to the 48, but now they're gonna mark the, the ball back the where he fielded the we ball. Had a fair catch, yep. ah. first down. All right, you can't advance a fair catch even if you're the guy who didn't call for it. Gay put up his hand calling for the fair catch. All right, so Wofford with a 10 nothing lead will go on offense. First and 10 from their 49 yard line. They have the breeze at their back, and the wind has picked up significantly. Two backs alongside Goodson out of the gun, fakes the dive to long, toss far corner, and I believe that is Wofford's Nick Colvin. He hurdles a man at the 50 and is knocked over at the Bulldog 48 by Kevin Graham. Defensive tackle, Nick Colvin, 6'2", 205, picks up three on the toss. Are they in David Marvin field goal range? <laughs> With this wind, you never know. Cole Cleary is checked in for Wofford at a receiver spot. He'll come to the right. R.J. Taylor goes left. Gouger sets up as a wing to the left. And now Lorenzo Long will motion to the near side out of the backfield, leaving a single back and a carry straight up the gut. Good yards. Nick Colvin to the 45. He'll tumble down at the Bulldog 43. Miles Pierce with the tackle. Colvin gets five. That'll make it third down and two. Got a flag? In the defensive secondary. Mm. Yeah, here comes the official. After the play, dead ball, late hit, number 99 oh, boy. on the defense. It's a 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Kevin Graham has been called for the late hit, and boy, oh boy, they're going to walk it all the way down to the Citadel 28 yard line. And in a game like this, Tom, if this possession can go for seven points, if you're the Citadel, you're a long way down in that hole. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of grass still in front of Wofford, but that's a that's a costly miscue for Citadel. On first down from the Bulldog 28, Goodson fakes the dive, wants to run the option right, and he is smothered for a loss. They didn't bite on the pitch man at all, and Goodson is thrown for a loss back at the 32. Graham and Pierce get in there for the Citadel and blow that thing up. It'll be second down and 14. Graham is getting an earful from one of his assistants. <laughs> mm. They left him in there for that play after the personal foul, but just pulled him out. and He was sternly talked to. Clock rolls down to 8.40 to play in the third. 10-0 Wofford leading. They have it second down and 14 at the Citadel 32. Goodson this time out of the wing bone. He's going to run the option to the near side off a stutter step, and he is flattened. No gain for Goodson. He is hit right at the 32-yard line. Malik Diggs, the free safety, fired up and took care of Brandon Goodson. That play developed slowly. Citadel just did a nice job of stringing it out, and Malik Diggs is as good a tackling safety as there is in this league. Diggs last year against Wofford had 11 tackles. Third down and 14 at the Bulldog 32 now. Wofford looking at third and long, though they are in Marvin's field goal range. Two receivers left. Hill a short split to the right. That's the short side of the field. Fake of the give. Goodson looking to make left corner, angling left. He takes it to the 30. He is run down at the 27, but we have a penalty marker down. 
to be holding on Wofford. Dondre Copeland showing a burst of speed to catch up to Brandon Goodson, who looked like he had all sorts of green in front of him. Dondre Copeland from Doe Run, Georgia, running like a deer right there, a fifth-year senior at 207 pounds. It's like we're at Candlestick Park. Yeah, it Holy. is breezy. Number 62 on the offense, 10-yard penalty. Third down. Got Ross Dimmel for that. It was, it was this is clear as day here. <laughs> Even myself, who thinks they should let a lot of holds go, that, yeah. not that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were in David Marvin's field goal range, and Brent Thompson wanted to take the yardage instead of force fourth down. So the Citadel coach says, "Let's push him back." Third and 24, Wofford at the 42. They need to get to the 18. Out of the gun, Goodson with two backs. Play action, time in the pocket, puts it up near side, and it's caught at the 22. Taken in by Wofford's. Blake Morgan. Blake Morgan. First catch of the year for Blake Morgan, who normally lines up in the backfield. Well, that play goes for 20. Now it's third down and four. Excuse me, fourth down and four. He went up and got that ball. He is tackled by Malik Diggs, and now the Terriers back into field goal range. David Marvin will give this one a shot from 39 yards from the right hash. Good snap, spot down. Kick on the way, twisting, has the distance. It's good. Second field goal of the day for David Marvin. Wofford extends the lead. What a weapon he has become for the Terriers. And we may look back on that 20-yard catch by Blake Morgan as a huge play in this football game. 6.46 to play. We're in the third quarter. We'll keep it here. Wofford now leading it 13 to nothing over the Citadel. The Terriers score first here in the second half. Six-play, 29-yard drive, but it took 3.30. Blake Morgan with a catch. Not listed on the depth chart from St. John's Florida Creekside High School. He's more or less a third or fourth stringer at a halfback spot. But Goodson found him with a fine pass and, and he had time to throw on that play. Yeah, good pass protection up front. Had to have that. Uh, anytime you start as close to midfield as Wofford just did, you want to get points out of it. Huge crowd here today. It's a homecoming weekend in Spartanburg. And give the Citadel credit as well. They've traveled extremely well. And they're quiet right now. Yeah. It, long way to go. A long way to go, and it's only a two-score game. That's right. Kickoff with the win left to right by Marvin. He will boom that over the head of Buffalo and into the hedges behind the end line of the end zone. Man. Let's see, that thing traveled 65, 75. That thing traveled close to 90 yards in the air. Now the wind is helping a little bit, my goodness. All right, Citadel on offense. If you're Brent Houston. Or Thompson. Or Brent Thompson, excuse me. I'm thinking Mike Houston, exactly. who's now at yeah. James Madison. Thompson was his OC before Houston went on to JMU and Brent Thompson took the reins. This is his first year as a head coach at the college level. You've got to figure out some way to get your offense moving. First and 10 from the 25. Bulldogs with two A backs, a B back, man in motion to the near side, throw to the far side, adjusted on and caught by Rudder Brown, and then two Terriers will wrestle him to the turf at the 32 yard line. Seven yard catch, Dominique Lemon. Terrier corner there along with Dutavius Wilson to combine on the stop. Dominique from Blythewood High School in suburban Columbia, a sophomore at 5'10", 180. Had an interception last week in the win at Western Carolina. Second down and three from the 32 on the right hash. Again, their version of the wing bone. Tight end lines up to the right, a receiver to the left, right up the middle, handoff Tyler Renew, and it looks like he's got the first down ahead to the 35. Miles Brown finally takes care of him. But that is a first round, first down run for the B back, Tyler Renew. He's got 15 carries for 62 yards. Just a shade over four yards per carry, which is what you want out of your B back or fullback. 
First and 10 Bulldogs from their 35. Two tight end formation. Or the wide receivers are tight either way, and it's a handoff. And this time it'll be an A-back carry behind right guard for two yards out to the 37-yard line. And pardon me, that was Renew with the carry. So they went back to the B-back, Miles Brown with the stop. Citadel not deviating from the game plan. They want to grind it out and see if they can get back into this thing with a score here. 13-0, Wofford leading. We're down to 5.15 to play in the third. Dominique Allen up under center, wide outs either side. Wofford, three linemen down, four on the line of scrimmage. And it's a handoff. The running back makes himself skinny, and he'll take it across the 40 to the 41. That time the carry was made by Rod Johnson, a reserve A-back, a redshirt freshman, Jaira Wilson. Wofford freshman reserve outside linebacker with the stop. Been a lot of young players you've talked about on both sides. Both of these clubs are positioned for success this year and down the road. Third down, a long four for the Citadel from their 36 yard line. Wingbone back to throw Allen, puts it up to the far side. Rudder Brown has it. First down reception. He'll step out of bounds at the far boundary at the 48 yard line underneath the coverage of Dominique Levin. That is a seven-yard reception, first down Bulldogs. Just a simple pitch and catch. Three-step drop, get the ball out, do it nicely to Rudder Brown, first down Bulldogs. They have it at their 48. Terriers jumping around on defense. In motion right, Williams. Play action for Allen. Plenty of time in the pocket. Now he's flushed out, scrambling to his left, being chased from behind, breaks a tackle, gets ahead to the 50 to the Wofford 45. What a run by Dominique Allen. Three different guys in black jerseys had a shot at him, and he is finally taken down by Lincoln Stewart. I thought Jairo Wilson was going to get him for a loss, but... Dominique Allen, proving how slippery he is, just runs out of that arm tackle. Second down and three for the Citadel. Into the Wofford end of the field. They're at the 45 on the left hash. Renew remains the fullback. Two halfbacks either side of him. No tight ends, wide outs either side. And Allen will spin to his right and hand it away. And that's a carry to about the Wofford 40 three-yard line by Rod Johnson. And he got the first down as he picked up enough. Boston Bryant, reserve defensive end with the Wofford stop. First time we've called his name today, a senior at 270. So the Bulldogs keep this drive moving. Wofford's lead is 13 to nothing, 3.07 to play in the third. Bulldogs going right to left, left hash mark. First and 10 from the Terrier, 43. In motion right, Williams. Stutter step by the quarterback after hesitating. And on the keeper, there is nothing there for Dominique Allen. Terriers closed it up. Lincoln Stewart gets in there for Wofford. He's seeing more and more playing time with John Patterson out for the rest of the day. Citadel, this drive has been methodic, but that play there gets him a little bit off schedule. Uh, <laughs> forcing them into second and 10. Drive started at their 25. This will be the ninth snap. They go back to two wide outs with very short splits. In motion right, Williams. Play action. Allen deep drop to throw. Sends it deep down the middle. Knocked away incomplete. Ball is knocked away by Dominique Lemon as he cut in front of the receiver. DeAndre Schultz at the goal line. What a great play by Lemon anticipating it. He had the underneath coverage and just jumped up there and swatted that thing away. Malik Rivera was the safety. Had, had him bracketed pretty good. Terrier defenders jumping up and down asking this homecoming crowd to make some noise. They want to get off the field. Third and ten Bulldogs at the Wofford 42. Renew the fullback. They go from their wing bone. Allen up under center. Wofford three linemen down. In motion right, Williams. Allen running the option left. Toss away to Cameron Jackson. He'll take it to the 40, to the 35. He'll go out of bounds there. He will be two or three yards shy of the first down. Jaleel Green ran him out. And it will him. be fourth down and about three. Might have given him the 34. They did. This is, this is no doubt they're going to go for this. 
They're in no man's land right here. 13-0 Wofford leading, 2.03 to play third quarter. The Citadel this year on fourth down, seven out of 14. Wofford opponents have only made it one out of five this year. Fourth and two at the Terrier 34. Three back straight across. Allen up under center. He's going to check off. And he, now he will use a timeout. Had to. Timeout. The Citadel. It's the first charge timeout of the half. Media timeout. And we'll take a break. Big fourth down call when we come back. 141 to play in the third quarter. Wofford's lead over the Citadel is 13 to nothing. This is Wofford football from IMG. Wofford up 13 to nothing, 141 to play in the third quarter. A fourth down call coming up for the Citadel. Van, what do you have? Up to the outside, don't be surprised to see the Bulldogs try to do something to the outside of the Terriers. All right, thank you, sir. Here we go, fourth and two. The Bulldogs set up at the Wofford 34-yard line. They just used a timeout before snapping the ball as Dominique Allen was trying to check off. And Mike, I keep doing that. Brent Thompson didn't like what he saw. Wide left Jordan, wide right Brown. He's made a couple of big catches today. Renew is the fullback. Williams and Jackson are the halfbacks. Allen digs it out, fourth and two. Toss away, first down running more. Reggie Williams, 20, 10, five. He took it up the numbers, touchdown Citadel. Well, that changes the complexion of this game quickly. They're right back in it. Wofford was so determined to not let him get it up the middle that the perimeter was wide open, and Van told you that's what he thought they were going to do, and they did it. Allen waited to the last possible minute to make the pitch, and the Bulldogs, Reggie Williams scores. Untouched, and now Wofford's lead is down to 13-6, pending the extra point try by Cody Clark, a transfer from Middle Tennessee State, a fifth-year transfer. On his PATs this year, he's been very good, 19 for 20. Van Vick is his holder. Patrick Keefe will snap the ball. Good snap spot down, and the kick into the breeze is good. Well, this game with a much different feel now. We have 133 to play in the third quarter. Wofford up 13 to 7. It's so funny how one play can give the stadium an entirely different atmosphere. The Citadel fans who have been so quiet today, heck, they'd been shut out till just a moment ago now come to life and the visitor stands absolutely packed with fans decked out in uh, light blue white and uh, fatigues for the cadets what a drive 11 plays 75 yards took over five minutes off the clock and you're right it, it, it one simple little play changes uh the complexion of things and now the onus switches to the Wofford offense. Sure. You've got to give your defense a little bit of a break to get coached up, some adjustments made. But you also need to put some points on the board. Wofford has had two possessions here in the second half, a three and out followed by a punt, and then a relatively short drive capped off by David Marvin's second field goal of the day, a 39-yarder. Lennox McAfee and Ellis Pace Back deep for Wofford to take the kick. The kicker is Jacob Godek for the Citadel. He'll kick it off right to left into the wind. Remember, the Citadel will have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. Line drive kick will sail to the two-yard line where it's brought out by McAfee. Straight ahead, 10, 15, 20, breaking a couple of tackles. Struggles to the 25, dragged down at the 27. And that's where the Terrier offense will go to work. Kafari Buffalo with the tackle on special teams for the Citadel. So here we go, Tom. Key possession for Wofford. As you mentioned, offensive line left to right. Demel, Miller, Daniels, Jake and Duffy, and Warby. Anton Warby making his 35th start today. The senior from Sweden. Daquan Miller, the other veteran, 28th start. Both of those guys are seniors. 
Will Gay and Hunter Windham the halfbacks. Lorenzo Long is the fullback. Brandon Goodson up under center. Wingbone in motion left long. He'll get a high toss. It's over his head. It's loose on the ground. It's picked up by one of the Bulldogs. He'll return it to the Wofford 16-yard line. It is Citadel football. That play went awry from the beginning, and Tevin Floyd has recovered a poor pitch that landed on the ground. Rue Daniels tackled him. First and 10, the Citadel at the Wofford 16. That was disastrous. That was just a tall sweep, and while it was high, that thing went right between Lorenzo's hands. He He had to leave his feet. Yeah. Simple, tall sweep. Wasn't even an option play. Well, Wofford's lead is 13-7, but looky here, the Citadel... First and 10 at the Terriers, 16 on the turnover. A high pitch by Goodson. The Terriers had not turned it over all day until now or once previously. Once down here deep. Oh, that's right. The fumble by Wyndham. Wing bone for the Bulldogs. Counter give. Williams trying to sweep right. Takes it to the 15. He'll go down inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. He's cut out from under there, but nonetheless, he gets 7 on first down before Dotavius Wilson stops him. Bulldogs trying to claim the lead here. Final minute of the third quarter. If you're Wofford, you want to try to hold them to a field goal attempt. Second down, we'll call it a long three from the nine and a half. In motion left, Cameron Jackson. Renew, handoff right up the middle. He is dropped close to the first down at about the seven-yard line by Jaira Wilson. If he didn't get the first down, he's awful close. It'll be third and about a yard. Renew finishes more runs falling forward than anybody I've seen this year. Allen up under center, third down and one at the Wofford seven. Wideouts either side. Renew is the fullback. Allen, quarterback, keep left side, takes it to the five, even the four and a half first down run. Dominique Allen, it is first and goal, and that'll be the final play of the third quarter. The Citadel knocking on the door as we go to the fourth here at Gibbs Stadium. Man, oh man, Wofford's lead is six, and the Citadel has it first and goal at the five. Three quarters in the books. Wofford trying to knock off the number six team in the nation, but the Citadel has found some life late here in the third quarter. Wofford up 13-7. This is the Wofford IMG Sports Network. being a member of a winning team i'll tell you i'll tell you about a guy carrying the weight of the world he needed an addition to his house oh, he he needed a place to get away a place to relax what's he talking about he went to founders federal credit union for a loan built a pretty sweet bank okay. founders, huh? make way it? better than a bank do you want one right he's on a roll let's win his member <laughs> That's what you deserve. And we're honored when you have us over for dinner. That's why pride is in our name. Carolina Pride. Crafted with Southern Pride. 
Momentum has swung in favor of the visiting Citadel Bulldogs. Wofford's lead is 13 to seven, but in a matter of just a few plays, the Bulldogs are now threatening to take the lead as we start the fourth quarter here in Spartanburg at Gibbs Stadium. The Citadel will now work with the wind at their back. First and goal at the five. Moving from left to right in white, Wofford on defense, black tops. The fullback is Renew Allen under center. Man in motion near side. He'll get the toss. That is Williams, and the Terriers stick him at the four-yard line. Took the toss about the seven, wanted to make the corner, got hit about the six, and Malik Rivera brings down Reggie Williams. It's second down and goal. This is a physical football goal. game. Terriers trying to keep him out and force a field goal try, protecting a six-point lead. Wide to the left goes Jordan. Wide to the right, Rudder Brown. Renew the fullback again. Jackson and Williams are the halves. Allen up under center. Wofford three linemen down. Allen falls down on the pitch, and he barely got it away, and the Terriers smother Williams at the nine-yard line. Lemon with the hit. Terrence Morris got in there and uh, crossed up Dominique Lemon, the quarterback, or excuse me, Dominique Allen. That was almost like Dominique Lemon came on a corner blitz, and it was Jaira Wilson that hit the quarterback, and then Dominique Lemon drops the running back. So, Silver lost, what, four on that play? They did. It'll be third and goal from the eight. 13-48 to play in the ball game, a 13-7 Wofford lead. The Citadel third down and goal now from the eight, right hash mark. Wide outs either side. Two B backs and an A back. Fake of the dive. They're going to run the reverse. Coming to the near side. Taking it to the two. And out of bounds at the one yard line on the reverse carry is Jorian Jordan. He did not get there. It is fourth and goal at the one. He is run out by Jaleel Green. Oh, decision time. It looked like he had the angle to make the pylon, but Jaleel was able to get a shoulder into him. He fell over the pylon, but the officials say he didn't get there. And it'll be fourth and goal where? They will spot the ball just inside the one. And obviously the Bulldogs are gonna line up to go for it. And now the officials stop the clock to reset the play clock. We're at 13-13 to play. One receiver goes to the left, fourth and goal from the one. Everybody jammed up tight. Allen calling out signals, man in motion left. Allen, quarterback keep into the pile. No signal, and now we get it. Touchdown, Bulldogs. I'm not 100% sure he got in on the fourth down play. I am 100% sure after the replay that they did get in on third down, so... They earned the touchdown no matter what play you give it to them on. Dominique Allen with the keep, stepped to his left and then drove into the pile and got it across the goal line. The Citadel has tied it, and now the extra point can give them their first lead of the afternoon. Once again, the kicker is Cody Clark out of Watkinsville, Georgia. The holder is Van Vick. The snapper is Keefe. He'll kick with the wind. On the way with it, and it is good. The Citadel is up a point. And we have a flag down, so hold on a minute. Probably offsides on Wofford. Flag down at the one-yard line. Van agreeing with Henson. Defense. That penalty is declined. The try is good. All right. And we will get a break. Citadel has gone ahead. Two and answer touchdowns. They lead Wofford 14 to 13, 12.55 to play in the ballgame. The Citadel has scored two straight touchdowns to go ahead of the Wofford Terriers. 12.55 to play in the ball game at Gibbs. Let's go to Van. Wofford coach is talking to the offense. The Terriers are going to have to hold on the ball. And let me tell you, Mark and Tom, before that last series where we fumbled the ball with a bad pitch, we, we averted disaster a couple of times before. We've been a little shaky with these pitches. We got to do ball control and drive this ball down for a Terrier touchdown. 
McAfee and Pace will drop back deep for Wofford to take the kick from Godek. He'll kick it left to right with the win from the 35. Wofford will work into the breeze now the rest of the day, Tom. That could be a factor. Yeah, it certainly could. Only down one if you have to try a field goal. Citadel has won an awful lot of close games this year. Kick away by Godek. End over end, midway deep in the end zone. Ellis Pace will be advised by McAfee to take a knee, so Wofford will start this drive at their 25. You look at what the Citadel has done. At Mercer to open, they won by a point. At home against Furman, they beat them by five. At Gardner-Webb, they win by seven. Then they blow out Western Carolina and a D2 in North Greenville, both on the road. Last week at Chattanooga, a one-score win, 22-14. They know how to win close games. They have won 14 of their last 16 going back the last couple of years. Will Gay and Lorenzo Long are the running backs. Brandon Goodson out of the gun. Two receivers right, one left. First down from the 25, and Lorenzo Long with a hole. Takes it up the middle, cuts back to his left at the 30, takes it out to the 34, where he is chopped out from under by Kalik Williams. Nine yards on first down for Lorenzo. Mike Ayers, as, as he sometimes does, has completely isolated himself on the Wofford sideline. He's a good 20 yards away from anybody else on the Wofford sideline. Terriers line up in the wing bone, two tight ends, so they go heavy. Second down and a yard from their 34. Option left for Goodson, looks for the seam. He's got the first down after a short gain as he crosses the 35 and is knocked over at the 36. And Brandon Goodson on his knees, slow to get to his feet. The middle linebacker, Tevin Floyd, really stuck the Terriers' starting quarterback, and we should mention the third-string quarterback is now grabbing his hamstring and is having Mitchell trouble getting to the sideline. The Terriers are already without Evan Jacks, injured in the preseason. Brad Butler went out with an injury against ETSU. A knee injury has ended his year, and now the Terrier third-string quarterback to start fall camp is grabbing his hamstring. 12.07 to play in the fourth quarter. And if Goodson can't go, Joe Newman, the true freshman, may get his shot. And we'll take a break. We'll have more on this when we come back. 12.07 to play. The Citadel leads by a point. This is Wofford football from IMG. There's a look at true freshman Joe Newman. He will take over at quarterback for Brandon Goodson, who may be back after this snap. He left with what appeared to be a cramp. As we come back, Wofford second down and a yard, oh, first and 10, pardon me, coming up at the 36-yard line in the Terrier end of the field. So Joe Newman, 5'11", 175, freshman from Riverdale, Georgia, will take the shotgun snap, fakes the give, and he carries left side, angling 40, near sideline 50. Newman will be thrown down at the Citadel 46-yard line. How about Joe Newman <laughs> running a little read option? I'm ben not, Roberts with the tackle. I'm not so sure what the busted play. <laughs> Yeah, might have. I think he took the wrong step and went the wrong direction. It was like, oh, God. <laughs> then he used his speed, but have one play, Joe Newman, and Brandon Goodson back in at quarterback for Wofford. They were stretching Brandon out on the trainer's table. Apparently, he cramped up. We thought it might have been a hamstring injury based on the fact he was grabbing his leg coming off the field. First and 10 at the Bulldog 45. Wofford down 14 to 13, early fourth quarter. Handoff right up the middle. As the shotgun snap went to Goodson, he gives it away to Long and Lorenzo pushing defenders inside the 40 down to the 38. That's eight yards on first down for Long before Pierce makes the tackle for the Citadel. We have 11.07 to play in the fourth quarter. The offensive line is making motions toward the sideline like basically like keep doing that keep running in yeah. between the tackles. I think they feel like they're starting to move them around a little bit up front. They're saying we got this. Wide to the right goes Cleary. One receiver in the slot to the right. A single man. Hill comes to the left. That's the short side. Second down and three at the Citadel 38. Out of the gun, Goodson with two backs. Running the option right. Toss away. McAfee juggling catch. Gets a block out front from Long. And he'll carry for the first down. Made the corner enough to get to the 35 to the 34. He is stopped by Tevin Floyd once again. Lennox McAfee from Nashville. 
caught that ball off his face mask and then got a good block from Long. Boy, that made your heart skip. One of the officials is needing some attention. Ooh. The umpire. Clock stopped 10.32 to play. Wofford led at the half, 10-0. David Marvin with a third quarter field goal, up the lead to 13-0. The Bulldogs on a fourth and two call, score a touchdown on a run by Reggie Williams of 34 yards. Wofford then fumbles the very next snap, snap, and the Bulldogs eventually score on a Dominique Allen run to go ahead 14-13, and that's where we stand. Give to the running back, and we'll get a flag as that carry goes for half a yard. Chase Nelson got the handoff, and he is hit right about the line of scrimmage. That was a different kind of looking play, Tom. I think Wofford might have been moving forward at the snap, Cole Cleary. I could be wrong. Phil Barrett, a reserve DB with the tackle for the Citadel. Yeah, that play looked broken from the start. No foul. Legal formation. All right, no foul. So it's second down and 10. They were going to whistle Wofford for an illegal formation, but the officials talked it over and got it right. This drive started at the Wofford 25-yard line. The Terriers... Now set up at the Bulldog 34, right hash, second down and 10, moving from right to left. One receiver to the right, two men come to the left, and one of those receivers will go in motion right. And it's a handoff and a carry to the left side, and not much doing. That is Will Gay on the carry, and he has stood up at the 31-yard line, so he got three. It'll be third down and seven. He is stopped by Malik Diggs, so now... David Marvin certainly able to hit a field goal from this range, but the breeze would be in his face. And it's substantial. He need more yardage. Third and seven at the 31 in the Citadel end of the field. Two receivers right with Taylor to the outside. Hill comes to the left. Two backs out of the gun. Goodson. Gay wants to sweep right, breaks a tackle, takes it far sideline, 30, cuts it back inside, 25 to the 20, Will Gay down to the 15-yard line. What a run as he threaded the sideline. He is tackled by D. Delaney. Will Gay with a 16-yard run, first down Wofford. Will faked the end around and then got just enough of a block from Anton Warby, but what a great cut back to his left right at the boundary. That allowed Will to rumble for another 12 yards or so, and... Now Wofford's knocking on the door. Tevin Floyd with the tackle. Wofford first and 10 at the Bulldog 15-yard line. Goodson checking off out of the gun. He's got two backs, Long and McAfee behind him. Man in motion right is Wyndham. Handoff, McAfee hitting the backfield, and he will lose a yard as he is spun down at the 16. Stopped by Joe Crochet, the cat linebacker, 249-pounder. That play got nothing. What a It'll, football game. Yeah. Both sides. Citadel leading 14-13. We have 8.22 to play. Bulldogs trying to remain unbeaten. Ranked sixth in the country. Wofford trying to get into the top 25. At 2-1 and one in the league, 4-2 and two overall. Handoff, McAfee slanting left. Breaks tackles, 10-5, touchdown. Lennox McAfee showing a burst of speed there. Hit that gap. A huge hole, offensive line, with a nice job opening up something for McAfee to run through. 16-yard touchdown run for McAfee, and Wofford goes back ahead. It is now 19-14, 8.09 to play in the fourth quarter, and Mike Ayers is going to leave his offense out there to set up for a two-point conversion to try to get the lead up to seven. One receiver will come to the left as the Terriers now ask to have the ball spotted on the left hash mark. R.J. Taylor comes to the left. The fullback is long. The halfbacks are Gay and Wyndham. The tight end, Chandler Gouger, will line up strong right. In motion right, Gay. Play action. Goodson throws. Man wide open. Tumbling catch by Gouger for the two-point conversion. That's the play Wofford wanted to run at Samford and couldn't do it. It worked there against the Citadel. 
And the Terriers have up the lead to a full touchdown, 8.09 to play. Wofford now leading the Citadel 21 to 14. Goodson play action, stepped back to his right, threw it across his body to his left, and Gouger took it off the grass top at the goal line with a tumbling catch about a yard deep in the end zone. That's a tremendous catch by Gouger as that thing was millimeters away from hitting the ground. Got it. Let's go to Van. Mark, I'm down here right now. Not only was he wide open, but you're right. It was maybe three or four inches from hitting the ground. And it was almost like slow motion. Everybody was hoping the ball could get there in time and that he could be across the goal line. And I wish you could look back and see this Terrier Stadium right now. It's pandemonium down the sidelines and up in the stands. Long way to go, kids. 8.09 to play. Wofford's lead is 7, 21 to 14. So the Terriers, for the moment, steal the momentum back. Man, oh, man. Wofford has, beat, Wofford has beaten these guys 16 of the last 17 head-to-head -head meetings, but last year that streak was broken in Charleston, and, Tom, it was a miserable day to be a Terrier. Wofford but, offensive line did a great job on that drive. 11 plays, 75 yards, 446 off the clock. Opened up a huge hole. Ross Dimmel with a key block on the Lennox McAfee 16-yard touchdown run. And then great pass protection on the two-point play. David Marvin with a short pop-up kick to the far side into the breeze. And one of the up men for the Citadel will make a running catch and step out of bounds at the far sideline. It was reserve running back, fullback Evan McField. He will go out of bounds. Where did they spot him out? Looked like he went out about the 28. I'm not okay. sure where they spotted him. There's a little discussion going on over there I don't see any terriers in the neighborhood but well, things, things, there's a little jawing going on after that play I think Nick Ward was in the middle of something because Mike Ayers was in his face okay don't give him 15 yards no you don't want to give him anything it's too good of a team Citadel first and 10 from their 28 yard line left to right with the breeze Dominique Allen, junior quarterback, up under center. In motion to the left, one of the A-backs throw to the far side, out of the reach of the intended receiver. Wanted to throw it to Josh LeBlanc, reserve wide out from Houston, Texas, a freshman at 6'3", 200, but the throw was wide as he ran an underneath crossing pattern to the boundary. Second and 10. Strange call on first down for me. Yeah, I, I, nope. Both of us. Second and 10 from the 28 for the Bulldogs. In motion left Jackson. He'll get the toss. Looking for a seam, and the Terriers bottle him up. Only a one-yard gain. Guys getting off blocks that time for the Terriers. Lincoln Stewart, one of those in there, along with several others. Detavius Wilson was one of the first ones there. Or, excuse me, Terrence Morris was one of the first ones there. And then Detavius Wilson helped clean it up. Third and long, Cam Citadel today on third downs, five for 13. Cam Jackson picked up two yards on the toss. Third down and eight Bulldogs from their 30. Left hash. Wofford's defensive front shifting. Allen, short drop, wants to throw, puts it up too high, incomplete, off the hand of the intended receiver, up over his head at the 50-yard line. LeBlanc at six foot three was the target, but the ball was thrown behind him and high, tried to make a one-handed catch with the left arm and could not do it. Fourth down, and the Citadel goes three and out. We're at 7.23 to play. Interesting play call on first down on the pass play that got him off schedule. Now they want to put this punt up in that breeze, hang it up there, and see if they can pin Wofford inside the 10. And if you're Wofford, ball security is a must right here on this punt because this wind is swirling. Van Vick has had one block today, but Wofford leaves their base defense out there. They're not coming after this thing. Van Vick gets away a boomer with the wind, a spiral, and Gay will run to his right and make the fair catch at the Terrier 21-yard line, and we'll go to break. Seven minutes, 16 seconds to play in the ball game. Wofford will take over with a seven-point lead, 21-14 over the Citadel. This is Wofford football from IMG. Eleven thousand one hundred and two people here in Gibbs Stadium, most since 2010 in the playoff game against Georgia Southern, sixth largest crowd in stadium history, and they've been treated to a dandy of a football game. 
Wofford will go on offense with a 21-14 lead, 7-16 to play in the fourth quarter. And on first down, handoff, and the ball carrier is flattened in the backfield for a one-yard loss. Joe Crochet all over that ball carrier for Wofford. Man. And it will be second down and 12. Crochet, one of the best in the league, all conference from my book. Showing it right there. Two tight ends, wing bone this time. Long is your fullback. Brandon Goodson under center in motion right McAfee. Terriers run the option to the short side, and Goodson is tripped up. Never got rid of the pitch, and it's a good thing he didn't, as the Citadel had it covered. No gain on that carry. The corner, Ben Roberts, steps up to make the play, and now the Terriers in danger of a quick three and out. It'll be third down and 12 as we roll the 6.20 to play in regulation. I don't think you dare put this thing in the air. I think you try to run something safe here. Continue to eat the clock. Cleary wide to the right. That's the short side. Two receivers come to the left with Hill on the outside. Goodson steps up to the offensive line, hands in the air, checking off. Two backs behind him out of the gun, fakes the dive, and his pitch is taken out of midair by one of the Bulldogs and run in for a touchdown. Kalik Williams intercepted the pitch with one hand, and he runs it in for a score. Can you believe that? What a horrible decision by Brandon Goodson. Citadel had the play defended, and then their player, Williams, just makes an outstanding individual play. This is unbelievably athletic. Got high in the air, knocked it down with his right arm, caught it in the bread basket, and then from about the seven-yard line, sprinted on into the end zone, and the Citadel an extra point away from tying up this game. And now how big was that two-point conversion pass thrown by Goodson to Gouger? Extra point kick coming up here for Cody Clark. On the way with it, and good, and guess what? We're tied. Terriers with two costly turnovers inside their own 20-yard line. This basically a scoop and score for Kalik Williams. 5.57 to play in the ball game, and we're dead even. Wofford 21, the Citadel 21. Very poor decision-making there by Goodson, but you're right, Tom, in that Kalik Williams made an outstanding athletic play from Ormond Beach, Florida, Mainland High School, where he was first-team All-State. And if you're first-team All-State in Florida, you're an athlete. I'll tell you that right now. Last year, he was second-team All-Conference. He was the conference's defensive player for the month of September this year. He is the Bulldogs' leading tackler from the strong safety position. And he has tied up the football game. That's just twice now Goodson has had pitches just go awry. Officially, they're going to call it an interception return. Really? Because of the, I guess because the ball was in the air. I guess. Looked like a backwards pass. Yeah, but, but, but either way. Either way, it's a 13-yard interception return. Now, if you're Walford, hey, it's even. You get the ball. Yeah, put together a scoring drive that takes 557 and get out of here. Kickoff by Godek, left to right, deep into the end zone for Ellis Pace, and he drops it out of the back of the end zone, a touchback. So Wofford will go on offense, first and 10 from the 25. Terrier's last drive ended on the pitch, return for a touchdown. The drive prior to that, Wofford went 75 yards for a score. Drive prior to that, they threw away a pitch. That was recovered by the Bulldogs. Ball security has become an issue here in the fourth quarter. If you had told me Wofford would turn it over three times, I would not imagine that the game would be tied. Yeah. 5.57 remaining. Wofford right to left into the breeze here at Gibbs on homecoming Saturday. We're all tied. Long is the fullback. Windham and Gay, the halves, two tight end formation. On first and 10 out of the wing bone. Handoff, long, tough sledding up the middle for a yard. Second and nine coming up. He is stopped by Kevin Graham. And you know what? At this stage in the ball game, conditioning is coming into play. Who's better conditioned? Yeah, good point, Mark. The cadets across the way chanting, 
as the Citadel has packed the far side stands. Two receivers left, one to the right. Goodson out of the gun, two backs behind him on second down and nine. Four on the line for the Bulldogs. Toss away far corner, McAfee with a chop step. Good yards, he's across the 30. Far sideline 35, McAfee out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Got a great block out front, and then he made just a little chop step, a subtle move to find his way to the boundary. Yeah, that block you mentioned was delivered by Lorenzo Long, who took the corner and basically just got enough of him and rode him out of bounds. Big time play uh, that time by Lennox McAfee, who's getting more carries here in the second half. Quinlan Washington, linebacker with the tackle. First and 10, Wofford from the 41. Out of the gun, Goodson, handoff right up the middle. And it's McAfee again across the 45, spun down at the 49. Eight solid yards on first down for Lennox McAfee. He's becoming a go-to guy in this ball game. Travis Johnson, defensive end from Fayetteville, North Carolina. 224-pound junior with the tackle for the Citadel. Wofford second and two. We're at 4.33 to play. McAfee out of the gun. Three receivers, two left. Hand off long. He makes himself skinny as he slants right and then cuts it up behind his tackle. He's got a first down to the 50 to the 46. Into the Citadel end of the field. Lorenzo gets five. Kalik Williams there to make the Citadel tackle. Trying to remember the timeout situation, Tom. I know Wofford has taken one this half. Have they? I believe they have. I thought Wofford had all three and Citadel had two. I know the Citadel has two. We'll have to check. First and 10 from the 46. Right hash out of the gun. Goodson handoff. Good hole left side. That's a carry to the 45 to the 40. And Hunter Windham is shoestring tackled. And he stumbles down at the 37. He was a step away from breaking it all the way. Reserve cat linebacker Russell Hubs just got a piece of his ankle. Tried to grab him up around his thigh. And his hand just came right down his leg. Enough to... Trip Hunter off, or he may take that thing the distance. We're down to 335 to play. The Terriers may not want to be in a hurry here. Just keep doing what you're doing. Second down into yard from the Bulldog 37. Two receivers left, one man to the right. Goodson shotgun snap coming with two backs. Toss away near corner. That is Gay. Tucks it under his left arm, makes a man miss with a side step to his left, takes it to the 35, to the 32, first down run. Will Gay gets five more. He is stopped by Miles Pierce. That should have been a gain of zero. Yeah. He danced and jumped and hopscotched his way and somehow got five yards. Seventh play of this drive for Wofford, tied at 21. Down to three minutes to play. Ball at the Citadel, 33. Wofford working into the wind if you're thinking about a field goal. Two receivers right, a single man to the left. Two backs for Goodson, shotgun snap. Handoff long, left tackle, maybe a yard. Stopped by Williams again. No gain, actually. Lorenzo will shuttle out. Andre Stoddard will come in for the Terriers. Fresh legs there at the fullback position. If you're Wofford... You don't want to let the Bulldogs touch the football again, if at all possible. We're at 2.26 to play. McAfee is checked back in at a running back spot. Second down and 10 at the 33. Shotgun snap for Goodson. And he'll hand it to McAfee. Looking for a crevice right side. He'll take it to the 30 and drive forward to the 29. That'll make it third down and six. Floyd and Crochet combine on the Citadel tackle. We're under two minutes to go, tied at 21. Mm-mm. Biggest play of the game right here because in that breeze and where Wofford is on the field, I don't know if a field goal is reasonable. Ball at the 29 in the Citadel end of the field. Third down and six. Goodson out of the gun, two backs, two receivers right, Hill to the left. The Citadel, four down linemen, three linebackers across. Play clock down to nine, Goodson milking it. We're at 1.30 to play. Fake of the dive to Gay, looking to make left corner on the pitch and not getting anywhere is Andre Stoddard as he is stopped for a loss back at the 32. And now with 1.17 to play. Timeout, the Citadel. There you go. Second charge timeout of the half. Citadel down to one timeout. Miles Pierce with the tackle. That play did not work for Wofford as Pierce came off a block. 
and was able to get in there and get to Stoddard before he had any chance to make positive yards. Great effort by yep. Miles Pierce. Ball spotted at the 32. Would be a 49-yard field goal into the win. It's a lot. Though the breeze has died it's for the died moment. down. <laughs> I'd kick that thing right now. <laughs> yeah, but you have to wait for the timeout. Kick it right now. <laughs> it would be a 49-yard try for David Marvin on fourth down and nine at the 32. One seventeen to play. The Citadel is one timeout remaining, and you were right earlier. Wofford with all three. David Marvin has already hit for two field goals today. On the year, he is 9 out of 12. This will be a 49-yarder from inside. The left hash mark with his right foot into a breeze. Spot down, and the kick is blocked high up into the air. It will roll, and it will be covered by one of the Bulldogs at the 33-yard line. A blocked kick. Yikes, and now the Citadel with 110 remaining and one timeout will get the football first and 10 at the Wofford 33-yard line. A low trajectory, and somebody got a hand on it for the Bulldogs. No idea who it was. It was a mass of white humanity there. But you're right, the longer field goal attempts are going to come out a little bit lower. And now the Terriers have to figure out a way on defense to keep the the Citadel out of field goal range. And remember, they will have the wind at their back. The field goal kicker, Cody Clark, has hit a long of 45 yards this year. First and 10 Bulldogs left to right from their 33. They have one timeout to work with. Allen will throw to the near side. The pass is batted down by Miles Brown. Got his hand on the football. Rudder Brown was going to be the intended receiver at the near boundary, but Miles Brown got his paw on it, and it's second and 10. That'll stop the clock with 107 to play. We are tied at 21. If you're the Terriers, you want overtime. Or a quick three and out. Yeah, that's <laughs> possible you, too. Because you've got all your timeouts. Good point. Three back straight across for Allen up under center. Wide outs either side. Allen checking off. Terrier fans making some noise on second down and 10. Man in motion to the near side. Counter give left. Cameron Jackson looking for somewhere to go on a slowly developing play. And he gets nothing as the Terrier swarm to the ball. Lincoln Stewart in there to get Cameron Jackson, and it's third down and 10 as he's tackled at the line of scrimmage, the 33. Terriers. 48 seconds to play. Terriers clearly playing for overtime as yeah. they're not using one of their timeouts. Third and 10 Bulldogs were at 23 seconds on the play clock, 38 seconds on the game clock. They can take it down to around 15 seconds before they snap it. Both Mike Ayers and Brent Thompson appear to be satisfied with overtime. Unless the Citadel does something dramatic here on third down and 10 from the 33. Nope, handoff right up the middle to Renew. He'll take it for two yards to the 35. And unless somebody spends a timeout. Time out. Yep. Wofford. Well, there we the go. The first charge timeout of the half. Wofford does use seconds. a timeout, time so now out. it's fourth down and eight at the 35. Well, Mike Ayers saying, all right, we've already blocked a punt today. Maybe we get another? You send 10? Send 11. Yeah? There's no rule that you can't. No, there is, that is correct. I, I'm, I'm curious as to why Wofford didn't call a timeout with 45 seconds left. I'll ask Coach on Monday. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if I will or not. All right, here's Van Vick. How many times has he punted today? He had one blocked in the first half by Terrence Morris. Eight kicks for a 39-yard average, but he's got the wind at his back. Will Gay back deep for Wofford, awaiting the kick at the 23. And if you're not sure about catching it, don't. Yep. Wofford will leave their base defense out there. They're not even going to come after this thing. And Van Vick gets away a spiraling line drive, and Gay says, I'm not going to touch it, and it will bounce on into the end zone. So officially, that's a 65-yard punt. And with seven seconds remaining in regulation, Wofford will get the ball on the touchback in a 21-21 ball game. You're right, a little curious that Wofford didn't use a timeout to maybe give themselves 30, 35 seconds 
to get the ball and move it down the field. Least. Maybe the thought process is with the wind in David Marvin's face that a field goal isn't as viable. Could be. Terriers are going to line up in the snap it and take a knee formation. I won't call it the victory formation because we're going to overtime, yeah. folks. Brandon Goodson surrounded by a couple of halfbacks will take a knee and guess what? We've got extra football on homecoming Saturday. Sixth ranked the Citadel. And Wofford tied at 21 after 60 minutes, and we'll go to break. Overtime when we come back to Gibbs. This is the Wofford IMG Sports Network. Tails is called. It is heads. Van Hip has calls. the coin toss. You would like to be on defense. You would like to be on offense. Which way would you like to go? We like to go that way. All right, very good. Van, what do we have? Wofford has won the toss. Wofford has, Wofford has won the toss. They've deferred. But let me tell you, Coach Ayers was talking to the team captains beforehand. This wind is now blowing more sideways. So uh, it's going to make a, a, a bigger impact. It'll be these gusts are starting to pick up, but it's more of a sideways wind right now. Van, did you get a look at the field goal try by David Marvin in terms of uh, how the ball came out? Yeah, it was just way too low of a trajectory. There was no way in the world that wasn't going to get blocked on the line of scrimmage. All right, very good. Thank you, Van. All right, here we go to overtime, Tom. Historically for Wofford, this will be the eighth overtime game in Wofford history. The last time, October 3rd of last year at Mercer, the Terriers ended up winning by a point thanks in part to a missed extra point by the Bears. All-time Wofford in OT, four wins and three losses. Couldn't find anything on Citadel's overtime history in their notes. All right, so here we go. 21-21, the Citadel off to that 6-0 and start. 4-0 and in the conference. The 6-0 and start for the Bulldogs matches the 1992 team for the best start in school history. They're trying to eclipse that today. In 1992, the Bulldogs were ranked number one in the country under a coach named Charlie Taff, who went on to coach in the CFL. The 4-0 and start the fifth time in their program's history. They have started SOCON play by winning four in a row. And they have that on the line here. Wofford's playoff hopes in many ways could be on the line here. Citadel left to right. They will work with the breeze. They start from the 25 overtime rules. Handoff right up the middle. Renew driving straight ahead to the 20. Five yards on first down for Tyler Renew. Tavius Wilson with the Wofford tackle. That's a solid start for the Bulldogs. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to do. A little fullback up the middle for five works nicely for them. Clock not a factor in overtime. It's alternating possessions. Ball on the right hash, second and five at the Wofford 20. In motion left, Cameron Jackson. Renew again will get the handoff, and the B-back will pound it straight ahead for just a couple. It'll be third down and three as he stood up at the 18-yard line. By the nose, Mikel Horton, the freshman. You prefer the college overtime or the NFL? NFL. I would like to see a hybrid. I like the college where both teams get possession, but I'd say started at the 50. Yeah, I like that. Wide left, Brown. That's the short side. One receiver goes to the left. Renew remains the fullback, third and three at the Wofford, 18. Dominique Allen up under center, takes the snap, handoff, Renew right side, leg drive, stopped at the 15 and a half. It'll be fourth down and very, very short for the Bulldogs. He needed three, he got two and a half, and again, Wilson plugs the hole for Wofford. Tom, they spot it right at the 15 and a half yard line. It is fourth down at 18 inches, and uh, they're going to run out the field goal unit. Oh, boy. And some of the Citadel fans, you can hear them across the way, they're not thrilled with this call. Yeah, a little grumbling. If you're Wofford, uh, I'm going to block in a return for a touchdown. <laughs> Cody Clark this year, six for eight on his kicks, as long as 45, the Middle Tennessee State transfer from the right hash, 32-yard try. Snap is there, and the Terriers were offside. The kick on the way, and it is good, but Wofford may have jumped off sides, and if so, the Citadel... I'm looking for them to take the points off the board. Tariq Lyles on the outside jumped as the snap came. 
Oh, my goodness. It was clear as day. Offsides. Defense. Number four. The results of the play is a first down. Yep, the Citadel will take the points off the board. They will have it first and 10 at the Wofford, 10 and a half after the walk-off. The chance of blocking that is so slim with a field goal that short. You've basically got to hope for a miss. And Tyreek just kind of hesitated a little bit, and when mm -hmm. he did, he kind of fell into the neutral zone. Terriers have been pretty good in terms of the penalty game today, but that one could bite him. First and 10 from just outside the 10. Handoff Renew right side, slung forward to the six. And it's second down. Two Terriers at the bottom of the pile that time. Dylan Young, Lincoln Stewart as Renew slanted to his right on the carry. Second down and we'll call it five and a half from the six yard line on the right hash. One receiver goes to the left, Rudder Brown, short split to the right. Renew remains the fullback with two halves. Allen will turn to his right, hand off Renew right into the center of the line, bulls his way to the four and a half. He got a yard or two, Miles Brown plugs it up and it'll be third down coming up. They need the half yard line for a first down. They spot it right at the four on the right hash mark. Overtime here at Gibbs, tied at 21. The Citadel with the initial possession. Kicked a field goal, but an offside call gave them the ball back. They need three and a half for the first down, four yards for the touchdown. On third down, they go from their version of the wing bone. Turn, play action, throw toward the back corner of the end zone. Runner Brown leaping try, but he's out of bounds. He caught it, but he is out of bounds as Dominique Lemon got into him and forced him out. It is fourth down. What a catch by Brown, but Dominique Lemon made sure he didn't get a foot down. And in college football, there is no force out rule. Nope, out of bounds. Good call by the officials. The toes came down out of bounds. Tough angle here on this field goal. Cody Clark, right hash mark. This will be a 21-yard try for the lead in overtime. Snap good, spot down by Van Vick, and the kick is true. And the Citadel now leads it 24-21. But the Terriers, Tom, know exactly what they need now. A touchdown wins it. A field goal would get us to a second overtime. Give defense, the defense credit for stiffening inside the 10 and give them credit for not letting that offside call deflate them in terms of emotion. Yeah, good point. You could easily just kind of hang your hat and say, oh, they're going to punch it in now. But the defense really stood up, made some plays. Now the offense. Yep. Hey, find the end zone for six and it's a happy homecoming. The good news in terms of a safety valve is starting at the 25, you are already in David Marvin's field goal range with the wind at his back, but you want more than that, and you don't want to turn it over. Gay and Wyndham and Long are your backs. Goodson out of the gun. Hand off Long, pops through the line, takes it to the 20, stumbles at the 15. He's down at the 14. He was this close to ending the football game. Yeah. Ben Roberts with the tackle. Oh, he was so close on this one. The quick hitter, fullback, got a nice seal block from a couple of the offensive linemen. Oh, I'd feed it to him until he can't carry it anymore. How's he doing today? 18 carries. He's over 100 yards now. First and 10 from the 14. Handoff, Gay. He again will go up the middle. He fumbles the ball. The Citadel is recovered and they win the football game. The ball came out and the Citadel wins it. And the officials are sprinting off, so that ben, is it. Ben Roberts covers it and the Citadel remains unbeaten. And homecoming has a happy ending for the folks on the visitor's side of the stadium. And Wofford's an absolute shock. Four Terrier turnovers today. And the final one comes in overtime and the Citadel Bulldogs are winners. Will Gay was churning, trying to we got Coach Ayers here. yard or two. Let's go downstairs to Van Hip with the coach. Coach Ayers, Terriers play tough, a mighty, mighty tough homecoming loss. Uh, we gave it away. 
bottom line, we just gave it away. Uh, said it was a good team. We played our tails off. They played their tails off. And it comes down, you know, we, we got uh, too many too many uh, giveaways and uh, frustrating, very frustrating. Uh, you know, we, we were coat of paint away from Lorenzo taking them to the end zone. And uh, in the next play, we, we put the ball on the ground. It's uh, inexcusable. Coach, defense played tough. The turnovers really, really cost us the game. No, no doubt about that. There's no doubt we gave up touchdowns because we gave them field position. Uh, defense played the lights out. Played the lights out. Coach, uh, this is this is tough football in, in the Southern Conference next week. You got to play a tough Mercer team that uh, lost only one point to these Bulldogs. It doesn't get any easier. No, no, no. It's you know the the conference is a tough conference, top to bottom. Uh, big thing that we got to do is we got to regroup. Uh, you know, you, you have these games, and, and these games are are uh, coming down to last play, coming down to one mistake or two mistakes. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind our kids were prepared. I think we had a great plan for them on both sides of the ball. We did a great job in the kicking game, and, uh, you know, we, we, we beat ourselves in the end. Coach, good luck this week. Thanks. Thanks to Van Hip, thanks to a dejected coach, Mike Ayers. Wofford falls in overtime today to the Citadel Bulldogs. The Bulldogs in OT kick a short field goal. Wofford coughs up the ball, fumbles it away. Ben Roberts recovers for the Citadel, and the sixth-ranked Bulldogs remain unbeaten. They go to 7-0 and overall, 5-0 and in the league. The Terriers now drop to 4-3 and overall, 2-2. Two and two in the conference. For Tom Henson, for Van Hip, I'm Mark Hauser. Thanks for watching. Bulldogs win it in OT.